Morning San Antonio starts right now. Well, we've been talking about this for a while through this pandemic, mental health issues in our children. There's a new funding that we're going to tell you about and how parents can help out. We have the latest on the conflict in Ukraine, what President Joe Biden has now authorized to help Ukraine's military fight its Russian invaders. And back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 36 degrees to start your weekend. What is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, February 26th. Thank you so much for joining us, starting your morning with us. It feels weird we're sitting. I'm just going to throw it out okay, there. Okay, um, um, do you want to tell the viewers Yeah, what so uh, <laughs> I tore my Achilles playing basketball. It is what it is. Uh, so thank you for everyone dealing with these. And thank you to all the directors and everyone behind the scenes letting us sit and coordinating around us. So I've been not very active recently. What have you been up to? We'll live vicariously through you. Um, well, it was really cold the last two days, so I didn't leave the house. Okay, I, same here. It was, yeah, so we're, yeah, you didn't miss out much, Max, because the weather has not been very nice. It's been cold since Wednesday, guys, and it's going to stay cold today, too. Here's the thing. We are expecting some light rain out there today, uh, but temperatures around San Antonio should stay above freezing. So we're not worried about any kind of icy precipitation around the metro area, but take a look up toward Bernie Stage Airfield. Temperatures are starting to dip close to freezing, if not below freezing, like up at Bernie Stage Airfield. It's 33 in Kerrville, 36 at JBSA Randolph, and 36 in Canyon Lake. Here's a look at the radar. Now, I turned up the intensity on this way high so that we could see even the lightest of showers. And as you can see, up into Kendall County, there is a possibility along I-10 between Bernie and Kerrville that there could be some very light freezing drizzle. But impacts are none, if, uh, if anything at all. There might be just some light glazing on elevated surfaces up there along that I-10 corridor. Uh, but it, around San Antonio, we're not worried about that at all. Instead, it's just going to be a fairly cold, gray, and sometimes damp day. We'll have cold drizzle and light rain throughout the day in spots. A high temperature only of 40 degrees here in San Antonio. But guess what? The sun will come out tomorrow. You bet your bottom dollar. It'll come out tomorrow. We just got to wait until noon. Afternoon tomorrow, we'll see plenty of sunshine for the first time since Wednesday and high temperature near 60. Coming up, we'll talk about the week ahead and what we can expect in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest in Ukraine, President Joe Biden authorizing up to $350 million in additional security assistance to provide immediate military assistance to Ukraine. This as the president of Ukraine, President Zelensky, urging the Ukrainian citizens to stand firm against Russian troops. Those Russian troops storming the Ukrainian capital. So Ukraine's President Zelensky has refused American help to evacuate, saying the fight is here. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. The situation in Ukraine is growing more urgent as the Russian troops invading the country push toward the capital of Ukraine. Friday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke to people across his country, urging them to, quote, burn down enemies' tanks and armor with whatever means. And Ukrainians are answering the call. Alexei Gontarenko, a prominent Ukrainian lawmaker, is among them. I don't want to fight. I'm not soldier. I'm not professional military man. But uh, I am not ready to capitulate. That's, that's the difference. Authorities have handed out 18,000 weapons and are teaching people how to make Molotov cocktails. Meantime, Ukraine's ambassador to the United States remains defiant. We remain committed to defend our home. We resist. We uh, will not surrender our capital to the enemy. And as the Russian invasion continues, a humanitarian disaster is unfolding. The U.N. says hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians are now on the move. This family making a 30-hour trek to the Polish border. They want to come back, but I don't know if they're going to come back. And the effort to punish Russia continues. The U.S. and the EU are now sanctioning Russian President Vladimir Putin and his foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, directly. And at the U.N. Security Council, a U.S. and Albania Albania-led resolution to condemn Russia for invading Ukraine failed after Russia vetoed it. The United Arab Emirates, India and China all abstained. History will judge us for our actions or lack thereof. But at a minimum, at, a, at the very minimum, 
the rest of us have an obligation to object. The U.S. will now take the resolution to the U.N. General Assembly. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Well, back here at home, still unclear how a gun went off hitting a man as he sat in the parking lot of a daycare facility. As you can imagine, a lot of parents were scared, a lot of kids terrified. This all happened outside a daycare facility in the medical center near Fredericksburg Road and Data Point. Now, police tell us a man was picking up his child. He had a gun in the vehicle, and as he was in the parking lot, the gun went off hitting the man in the leg. Luckily, no other injuries reported. Other family members ended up picking that child who picking up that child who the man intended to get. Well, a call to action against child abuse prevention. Advocates are calling on city and state leaders and religious leaders to do more to stop child abuse. This following the arrest of the father and stepmother of a four-year-old child that died six months ago. This is the third arrest this month of caretakers facing charges in fatal child abuse investigations. A child abuse prevention educator says the community needs to put more pressure on the state agencies responsible for protecting children to ensure that agencies can, local leaders need to fork over more funding for prevention and education, but it's also the responsibility of the community. We really need our faith leaders to speak to this. Our families are starving for moral compassing. If you suspect child abuse that ch that could be endangered, uh, Child Lifeline, you call 911. All right, so the rise in mental health conditions continues to increase not only amongst adults, but also in kids and adolescents. This as the pandemic is now entering year two. So we know several pediatric health organizations declared a national emergency for children's mental health and parents want to know how you how they can help their kids. Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the newsroom with more. Jonathan, so what age groups are experts saying are the most impacted? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Well, the CDC report is showing, uh, finding a worrisome trend among young people experiencing and needing more help for mental health conditions. Those concerns amongst kids ages 3 to 17. That CDC report finding that eating disorders have doubled among female adolescents and tick disorders have tripled. We're talking about depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorders that have also increased. Experts are telling parents, keep an eye on your kids, look for changes in behaviors, look for things like sleep patterns or shifts in attitude. They say it's important to talk to your children and not only ask them how they're doing, but if they have any thoughts of harming themselves. Now, local educators and administrators are very much aware and up to speed on this issue and have implemented resources that are available to students. One of those resources, the San Antonio Mental Wellness Collaborative made up of six nonprofits who were created to offer counseling to students in South San, Harlandale, and Edgewood ISDs. Now, Max, Sarah, because of the increase of parents trying to get help, trying to get help may take some time, but experts are encouraging parents to not stop until they find their children the right help and the help they need. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. An SAPD officer who was fired has now had his termination reserved. The chief fired officer, Lee Beigert, last year calling his verbal assault on a female funeral home director sexist and unprovoked. That incident was caught on body camera video, but an arbitrator has reversed that decision and Beigert is now expecting back pay. In a separate case, an arbitrator sided with Officer Tim Garcia, who was caught on camera using a racial slur on a black man under arrest. Garcia also won his job back. The city and police union are still discussing what changes, if any, will be made in a new contract when it comes to disciplinary process. In your morning headlines, authorities investigating the motive of a 23-year-old man who walked into a Milwaukee police station and started shooting. So after firing his weapon, police say the suspect ran out of the station. That's when officers returned fire. This all happened yesterday again in Milwaukee. Officers chased and caught up to the suspect. That's when he was shot. Now, his injury is not life-threatening. He is expected to survive. The police chief there says the incident caused a lot of damage, and understandably, officers and department employees were shocked. The station is the same police station where a man died in custody on just Wednesday.
The retired police captain that was charged in the shooting death of a man in a movie theater over popcorn that was thrown has been found not guilty. Curtis Reeves was charged in the so-called popcorn murder that happened back in 2014. Reeves claimed he acted in self-defense when he fatally shot Chad Olson, who threw a bag of popcorn at him during an argument inside the movie theater. The jury supported Reeves' right to self-defense based on Florida's controversial Stand Your Ground law. Time now, 610, 36 degrees out. A lot of people dread doing housework. I know I'm one of them, but a new study just published says it could be good for your heart. Interesting. Find out which group the study suggests will benefit the most. All right, the CDC apparently giving in a little bit when it comes to masks. The agency has some new guidelines we're going to tell you about. It has been just yucky, not fun, bundle up weather. <laughs> 36 degrees at 610 this morning. Sarah Spivey says there's a little bit of bright hope in our future. She'll explain when we come back. Welcome back. Taking a look at the pandemic locally, Metro Health says our COVID-19 risk level is at moderate, but improving. According to local data for the past week, we've averaged 314 cases per day. Metro Health is also reporting five more deaths. And I look at this as of last night, there are 365 COVID-19 patients in our local hospitals. There are more COVID-19 patients in the hospital now than what we saw exactly two months ago on Christmas Day when there were 202 patients. All right, now a big update to CDC guidelines. They are easing up on masks based on new numbers, whether it's case numbers, hospitalizations, and hospital capacity. The CDC is dropping a lot of mask recommendations for more and more people around the country. So it's based on those three factors. Now, the CDC designated levels for different counties. They're either high, medium, or low. Pretty simple. In the low level, masks are no longer recommended, but people could still choose to wear a mask if they want to, regardless of the level of their county. The CDC placing Comal County in the low category, Kendall in the medium category, but here in Bear County, we are still in the high category. That means CDC still recommending that people mask up indoors when they're in public spaces. And Sarah Spivey, you're saying people want to stay indoors for at least the morning because it's going to be cold. Oh, yeah, and today it's going to be cold, guys. Not mm -hmm. exactly an ideal day to be outside walking around. You know, we're going to have areas of scattered drizzle and light rain all day long, and it's going to stay cold. Take a look at the radar right now. Uh, now, again, I've turned up the intensity of this radar. So what you're seeing here is really just some drizzle or some sprinkles uh, that that's it. We're not looking at any kind of substantial precipitation. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is that that radar kind of turns from green to pink right up in the hill country in Kendall and in Kerr County. And there is a possibility that in some areas temperatures here are right near freezing. So we're talking 33 32 degrees and there could be some very light freezing drizzle that's occurring in the hill country this morning impacts none or minimal if anything at all like a glazing of ice on elevated surfaces but we'll be keeping an eye on things for you and if you are uh, up in the hill country and have to travel early this morning just exercise caution on those bridges and overpasses otherwise just some light to uh, drizzle and sprinkles moving from the south uh, into bear county we're going to stay above freezing here in san antonio so we have no concern whatsoever about freezing drizzle in the alamo city this this morning. Instead, uh, it's just cold outside. It's 33 in Bulverde. As you can see, I just mentioned that Bernie Stage Airfield right near freezing, but notice at Kerrville it's it's 33. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some nooks and crannies up in the hill country that are touching freezing like Lost Maples, which is at 31. 36 in Port SA, 40 at Stenson, 36 in New Braunfels, 36 at Canyon Lake, and 38 in Hondo. Uh, wider view here, and again, upper 30s is a safe bet for many uh, folks, mid to upper 30s, 39 in Catula and 36 in Beeville. We've also got a wind from the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's where the wind is going to stay today, and it is going to create a bit of a wind chill. So even though temperatures are in the 30s, 36 degrees in San Antonio, it feels like it's 29. It feels like it's 28 in New Braunfels, and it feels like it's 27 in Kerrville. Temperature
temperatures today are just not going to budge all that much because as you can see to our south and to our east, we're seeing some other showers working their way in uh, from the south. So Beeville, Victoria, you're seeing some very light rain at the moment as well, and that's going to be the norm for the day today. Not amounting to much, maybe maximum up to a tenth of an inch of rain around San Antonio, and that's if you're lucky. Elsewhere across parts of the coastal plains like Hallettsville, Gonzalez, slightly better chance for some rainfall out there, rainfall higher rainfall amounts, but all in all, it's going to be a gray and somewhat damp day with passing areas of drizzle and light rain showers. Take a look at high temperatures again, only near about 40 degrees in San Antonio, not warming up all that much uh, beyond where we're at right now. And even up in Kerrville, temperatures are going to stay in the 30s. Out toward Del Rio, though, about 10 degrees warmer, closer to 50 degrees. So again, today a gray and somewhat damp day with wind chill in the air. Temperatures will be hovering in the upper 30s throughout the day near 40 degrees in the afternoon, wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, just going to be chilly and clouds are going to stick around all day. We're not going to see the sun today, but we will see the sun tomorrow and that's going to have a big impact on our temperatures. Take a look at high temperatures rebounding nicely. We have been cold since Wednesday, but we're finally going to be nice and comfortable tomorrow and through the week. Our temperatures will be warming up into the 70s. Now, just as a caution tomorrow morning, you'll wake up. You won't see the sun. It's still going to be cloudy in the morning hours, but by noon, by lunch, the sun's going to come out and we're all going to be doing a little happy dance because of that sun coming out. I don't I don't know about you, but I've been longing for that sunshine, Sarah and Max. Me too, Sarah. Thank you. All right, 619, 30, what is that, 36 still? Oof. So as a result of the rush of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the demand has dramatically spiked what banking officials are now doing to keep cash flowing in the country. All right, so you talked about this earlier. A well-kept home could mean, get this, better heart health. It's according to a new study. We're going to explain right after the break. Good morning. Welcome back. The FDA one step closer to completely banning menthol-flavored cigarettes and cigars. So remember back in 2020, the FDA enacted a flavor ban on e-cigarettes because they targeted middle school and high school students. So now... Public health officials argue banning menthol, the last allowable flavor in cigarettes, it'll save lives. The proposed menthol ban will still need to be open to public comment before a final decision and final review is made. A new study published in the Journal of American Heart Association say some older women could benefit from chores like washing dishes and cooking via health benefit. The study from the University of California San Diego, yes, yeah, Sarah Spivey's not too happy about this, neither am I, measured the physical activity of more than 5,400 women between the ages of 63 and 97. So scientists say they have found that women who perform routine activities like housework, cooking, and gardening saw reduced risk of heart disease. I believe men did this study. <laughs> so for, first and foremost, women historically live longer than men, so congratulations there. But also, in you know, with me and my girlfriend, I would say I do the majority of the housework. And growing <laughs> up, my dad did the majority of the housework. Uh, no, too. I do the majority of my housework. Sarah Spivey, comment. Yeah, that study. I'm sorry. It's obviously done by men. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time now. 6:24. Uh, 36 degrees out. Sorry, Spivey. All right, so coming up, Russians are trying to get their hands on as much money as possible following the attack on Ukraine, how the banks over there are responding. Russia's central bank is reportedly increasing the supply of cash to its ATMs due to an increased demand. Officials say the say to meet the bank increased issuance to meet the demand of the increased of cash to banks and are replenishing ATMs throughout this weekend following Russia's invasion of Ukraine on Thursday. Russian state news agency has reported that several banks had seen an increase in withdrawals, notably a foreign currency. Yeah, they have to replace the ATMs because everyone's taking out all the cash and trying to get away. Ooh. Yeah. All right, time now is just about 628, 36 degrees out. Well, looking how to invest your money or make your own money, you may need to find a financial advisor. We're going to give you some tips on how to find the right one for you. All right, an old school building. Yes, an old school building. Well, it is now being repurposed and used to help veterans. We're going to explain how this all happened and what it's going to be used for in just a bit. 
Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 631 this morning, February 26th, and clearly it still feels like winter out there. It's gross. <laughs> it's disgusting. I'm just like, anytime I have to just even go to my car in the driveway, I'm mm -hmm. just like, oh, I'm not happy about it. Heat on full blast, ready yeah, to go. I mean, I had my heater blasting at 70 all day, Sarah, wow. and um, I don't want to see my bill, but it was it was it was just so cold outside all day yesterday. Yeah, but guys, you know, it really could be worse. We we know how much worse it could be out there. Uh, but you know, we are going to have one more cold day here for us. Temperatures not getting much above 40 degrees this afternoon, and it's going to be somewhat damp at times. Take a look at the radar right now. Again, I've turned up the intensity to this radar, so everything you're seeing here is very, very light. Okay, light showers, drizzle even, and, and you can see that that's more prominent across our southeastern communities like Quero and even up toward Hallettsville. We're starting to see a swath of light rain mist drizzle pushing up to the north there toward Gonzales, toward Luling, toward Guadalupe County. And then you'll notice that up in parts of Kendall County and Kerr County, you're starting to see this little light pink color. Temperatures are right near freezing in Kerrville and in Bernie, either at 33 or 32 degrees this morning. And so some of that could actually be freezing drizzle, but we do not anticipate in many impacts from that, if any at all. Uh, if you do have to travel early this morning, like within the next hour or so, just exercise caution on the roads. But again, it should be fairly dry because really this is very light precipitation. Uh, and we're gonna continue to see that light precipitation throughout the day today. It is the last weekend of the rodeo. And if you're planning on celebrating in downtown San Antonio, just know that throughout the day today, we're gonna be dealing with uh, on and off again, drizzle and light rain, not amounting to much at all, but keeping things cold for us. Our high temperature should only be about 40 degrees. Northeast winds today at 10 to 15, so that'll add a little bit of a wind chill in the air as well. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Cold, cloudy, and somewhat damp today, but the sun does return tomorrow. In fact, by lunch, we should see plenty of sunshine tomorrow. And then in the week ahead, it's going to be beautiful and spring like I'll show you those temperatures, how nice and comfortable it's going to be in the week ahead. And of course, we'll take a closer in-depth look at that radar in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right. So as the pandemic continues, we continue to see a rise in mental health issues, especially with our kids and our adolescents. Several pediatric health organizations declaring a national emergency for children's mental health. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Well, a new CDC report showing a worrisome trend that more young people are experiencing and needing treatment for mental health conditions. And those concerns are among kids 3 to 17. Now, listen to this. Eating disorders have doubled among adolescent females and tick disorders have tripled. We're talking about depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorders that have also increased. Now, experts are telling parents to keep an eye on your kids, look for changes in behavior, look for things like sleep patterns or shifts in attitude. They say it's important to talk to your children, not only ask them how they're doing, but if they have any thoughts of harming themselves. Now, local educators and administrators are very much aware and up to speed on this issue and have implemented resources that are available to students. One of those resources, the San Antonio Mental Wellness Collaborative, made up of six nonprofits who were created to offer counseling to students in South San, Harlandale, and Edgewood ISD. Now, there are nonprofits in our area that can help, like Clarity uh, Child Guidance Center that specializes in kids ages three to 17, all at a low cost and able to assist families that are low income. For more information, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. If you're looking for a job, Pre-K for SA is hiring this morning. They are hosting a job fair from 9 a.m. until noon. Mm -hmm. Officials say they are looking for teachers, assistant teachers, teacher aides, administrative associates, and substitutes. The job fair is being held at East Education Center at 5230 Eisenhower Road. Applicants are encouraged to apply before the event. Remember to bring your resume. And officials say some applicants may be interviewed on the spot. All right, so City Council approved contracts for community partners to implement the $200 million SA Ready to Work Education and Job Placement Program. The goal of this program is to place more than 28,000 people into either certification or degree programs and get at least 15,700 people locally 
into high quality in demand jobs. So the launch for the program is set for April to better explain the program, the benefits to families in our community, how to enroll and to find out if you're eligible. The director of the initiative, Michael Ramsey, he is joining us tomorrow morning, leading us at 8 a.m. If you have any questions you would like to ask about the program, how to get involved, or how you can enroll, you can submit those questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. All right, a mission to help veterans could end up doing much more than a couple probably thought possible. So we're going to introduce you to Sam and Susie. They gifted an old school building and the property it sits on to a San Antonio veteran organization. So while the mission is to give hope to veterans, it could also stimulate the small town of Campbellton that sits southeast of Pleasanton. Patty Santos has a story. About an hour south of San Antonio sits Campbellton population, just under 500. We're just a friendly little town. It's quiet, peaceful. It's also now the future home of the first American GI Forum veteran retreat. There's just unlimited potential for what we can use it. Thank you. Owners Sam and Susie Katara donated the former school in Campbellton and the roughly three acres of land on it to the veteran nonprofit. I'm not going to see that building uh, die. You know, things that aren't used fall apart. There's someone else who can use it. After the oil boom, the school was left vacant. After several failed attempts to repurpose it, the couple decided they wanted to donate it to someone who could do something good with it. Our desires really is to provide a retreat location for uh, veterans to come and improve their conditions, uh, give them hope for the future. Currently, American GI Forum provides housing, mental assistance, and other services to area veterans. Some are homeless, uh, some have had some traumatic times, and this gives us an opportunity to take them to this facility once we've repaired it and provide a retreat for them. The new facility can house about 14 veterans, but the retreat is just the beginning of the many ways veteran nonprofits can collaborate. The Qataris hope that the facility will help bring healing to veterans, but also bring new life to their dying town. If there's something to kind of stimulate their excitement about their community and, and things will kind of domino effect from it, I hope. Martin Yamas, a Vietnam veteran and Campbellton resident, applauds the donation. He's glad the building he had a hand in building as a teen will make a comeback. Maybe I can go sit at the door and greet the people. <laughs> Welcome them to Campbellton. Welcome huh? them to the big city of Campbellton. <laughs> Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. So officials with the American GI Forum estimate it's going to take about a million dollars to fix this property. Some donations have already started to come in. They are hoping to have the first phase of the renovations done so veterans can start using it by this summer. That is such an awesome story. Great job by Patty and great job to everyone who helped out. Mm -hmm. Time now, just about 640, 36 degrees out. Just ahead on GMSA, how to choose a financial advisor who will make your money multiply. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Trying to get those temps to multiply. 36 now. What does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. A 2020 Northwestern Mutual study found that 71% of Americans admit their financial planning needs improvement, yet only 29% of them work with a financial advisor. While these experts can help make most of your investments, you have to be careful to pick the right one. RJ Marquez explains what to look for and what mistakes a lot of people do make. With all the ups and downs of investing, picking a good financial advisor can make all the difference when it comes to growing your funds. Research shows people who work with an expert feel more at ease and end up with 15% more money to spend in retirement. You want someone to advocate for you, but of all the reasons why it's really beneficial, I would say that it's objectivity and accountability. But finding the right advisor can be tricky. One common mistake, going with the first expert that you meet. You should interview several before making an informed decision. Also, don't choose someone who's not a registered fiduciary or an expert who is ethically required to act in your best interest. A fiduciary is held to a higher standard. When they present advice to you, they present advice that is in your best interest. Also, make sure you know their credentials. Inquire about licenses and tests they've taken and whether they are a certified financial planner. Lastly, don't be afraid to ask how they're paid. 
Some fee-only advisors will charge you a flat rate no matter what. Others take a percentage of your assets, and some are paid commissions by mutual funds, which can be a conflict of interest. And don't skip the hard questions. Ask about your advisor's specialties. Some concentrate on retirement planning, while others spend most of their time managing business owner portfolios. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, turn to the weather, Sarah. Your shirt matches the weather graphic. Yeah, sometimes not a great thing, especially when we're talking about cold. No. <laughs> and it is cold across the state of Texas this morning. Take a look at that 12 in Amarillo. 15 in Lubbock, 32 in Junction. That freezing line is starting to move into our viewing area, our metro area. Notice that up at Bernie Stage Airfield, it's 32 degrees. It's 33 in Comfort, 33 in Kerrville, 31 in Lost Maples. So that freezing line is its just about around the hill country right now in Kendall and in Kerr County and in Western Bandera County. Meanwhile, it's 36 in San Antonio, 36 at JBSA Randolph, 35 in Seguin, 34 in Bulverde. We will not get to freezing this morning in San Antonio. We will stay above freezing. But for those areas that are seeing the, uh, the freezing temperatures, we do have some very, very light drizzle up there, potentially some light freezing drizzle there as well. You can see up across uh, parts of Kendall and Kerr County, uh, just some light sprinkles and drizzle working their way across that I-10 corridor. Now, impacts should be very low, if any at all. Maybe a light glazing on elevated surfaces. If you live in Bernie, if you live in Comfort, if you live in Kerrville, you may notice a little bit of light ice on your car this morning. But as far as travel impacts, we really don't expect anything. Uh, one thing I would be careful about, though, just in case you do have to travel those bridges and overpasses. But for the most part, those should be just fine. And again, and here in San Antonio, we're not expecting anything icy whatsoever. There is increasing precipitation to the southeast of San Antonio, some drizzle and some light rain showers moving north into Gonzales, into Cuero, and into Hallettsville. And throughout the day today in San Antonio, we are going to have the chance all day long for some light drizzle and some light rain showers. It is not going to amount to much if anything out there today, just making for a bit of a nuisancey forecast for us with cloudy gray skies and chilly and somewhat damp conditions. Some light rain was picked up at the airport here, and that's what you're seeing. 36 degrees at the airport. Winds from the north northeast at about 10 miles per hour in San Antonio, 10 to 15 miles per hour elsewhere, so that it is adding a bit of a wind chill. It feels like it's 29 in San Antonio, even though it's in the mid 30s, and it feels like it's 28 in New Braunfels and 28 in Curve. All in all, a cold day for us. And as I just mentioned, throughout the day, we're going to have the chance for scattered rain. It's just going to be drizzle or very light rain showers, perhaps amounting up to a tenth of an inch in some places, especially east of San Antonio, but not doing anything to help us out in the drought department. So today's forecast, as I mentioned, temperature is just not going to budge all that much. We're really only going to top off near 40 degrees in the afternoon. And on top of that, we're going to have a wind chill throughout the day, too, with winds from the northeast gusting up to 20 miles per hour. It should be fairly quiet this evening. You won't need to worry about taking the umbrella anywhere this evening, uh, but we'll start the day again tomorrow cold and cloudy with temperatures in the upper 30s. But here's the good news. Right around lunch, sun's going to come out, and it's going to be a beautiful day. In the afternoon tomorrow, we'll be topping off near 60 degrees around San Antonio, uh, 50s out to the east and mid-60s up uh, toward Del Rio. And, and then after that, smooth sailing. We're really going to have beautiful weather in the week ahead. I wish we could say we were going to get better rain chances because, again, the drought is starting to uh, really increase, but generally a beautiful respite from the cold weather that we've had since Wednesday. Wednesday. Hard to believe that uh, we've been that chilly for that long. Max and Sarah. All right, sun will come out tomorrow. Thank you, Sarah. 648, 36 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! Oh my goodness. I'm just going to say it. Stayed up late to watch the end double overtime and the Spurs get the win. Not only do they get the win, they get the win on the rodeo road trip. We're going to full highlights in just a bit. Take a look outside with the roads. You can see the sun is slowly starting to come up there. Things look like pretty smooth sailing out there at 281 and loop 410. We'll be right back. After we talk about the lottery. Yes. Pick three, 752, Fireball four. Daily four, 1558, Fireball four. Cash five, 59, 23, 27, 30. 
Mega Millions, 15, 31, 40, 56, 66, Mega Ball 4, Mega Plier 3. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go Spurs. Back in action last night, kicking off the second half of the Rodeo Road Trip in D.C. Coach Pop, get this, only three games away from all-time wins record. DeJounte Murray, right here, wait for it. The all-star, bang, gotta love it. Jacopoto back to Murray, he got the bucket, tied game at 16, Spurs on the break, Murray with the assist, Poto gets the jam, keeping it tied, final seconds of the quarter, Lonnie Walker the fourth, attack in the rim, Spurs trail by three after one, Spurs create some space just before half, Murray going behind the back, knocking down the jumper, Kelvin Johnson really killing it from beyond the arc, pump fake, drops the three, draws the foul, Spurs put up 45 points in just the second quarter, they led by four at the break, so we're going to the second half, Spurs get the hot hand in the third, Johnson, bang, lining up, knocking it down. A 10-point lead, Devin Vassell connecting on the catch-and-shoot three. 11-point lead, eight Spurs turnovers, giving the Spurs, the Wizards a chance to take the lead until Lonnie Walker, the fourth, drains a baseline jumper at the buzzer. Spurs up one in the fourth. Podal, nice dish to Murray for the bank. Spurs, 9-0 run, a six-point lead. Wizards, Cantavius Caldwell Pope managed to come up with that layup. Spurs final shot, Murray launching the three, misses the mark, and guess what? We got overtime one. All right, here we go. Lonnie Walker on top, baseline, throwing down the monster jam, and showing the range outside shot. This three gives the Spurs a one-point lead, game tied at 145. Murray giving another shot at the game winner, can't get it to drop, going to double OT. So, Jacopoto. Putting on another double-double during the game. 28 points, 11 boards with that board. And the putback spurs up one. Murray attacking, pull up, getting the jumper off to the glass and falls. He had another triple-double, 32 points, 14 assists, 13 boards. That is 16 triple-doubles for DeJounte Spurs. Hang on to win 157 to 153. Double OT. Now Pop just needs two more wins to make NBA history. Well, that's a great example of uh, pounding the rock. They just kept playing, uh, never gave in, made mistakes, did some good things, made some mistakes, did some good things. I was a little tired, uh, you know, but when you're trying to win basketball games, there, there's no excuse. Uh, so, you know, I, I fought through it and, you know, the team fought through it and we came out with a, a huge team win. Huge team win, one step closer, one game closer to that play-in tournament. Up next, Spurs in Miami taking on the Heat tip-off, 7 o'clock at the American Airlines Arena. Go Spurs, go. I was going to be very game. upset if they didn't win that. I stayed up and I was watching on my phone and I was like, please just win. Win so I can go to sleep. Worth it. Worth, Worth it. it always. All right, 6.55, 36 degrees out. Coming up on GMA breaking news this morning in the battle for Kyiv, Russian forces launching attacks on Ukraine's capital, the intense fighting and the thousands of civilians caught in the crossfire, creating a potential humanitarian crisis. The new warning from Ukraine's president and the reaction from the White House as cities across the world stand in solidarity with Ukraine. Our team is on the ground across Europe as the battle develops. Plus historic nomination, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson becoming the first black woman woman to be nominated to the U.S. Supreme Court, her path of public service, and her tribute to those who came before her. And President Biden keeping his promise as he sets his sights on the future of America's court system. And a new big shift in COVID guidelines. The CDC sharing new data measuring hotspots, what they're saying about masks in public places and schools. It's all ahead on GMA. All right, we do have a little bit of freezing drizzle up in the hill country, so near Comfort and Kerrville, but minimal to no impacts expected from that. Just be careful on bridges and overpasses on I-10. Elsewhere, temperatures will not go below freezing. That includes San Antonio. Some light rain and some drizzle occurring east of San Antonio right now for Seguin, Gonzales, Hallettsville, Floresville, and Cuero. Take a look at temperatures bottoming out at 35 this morning in San Antonio, and we're really only going to warm up to near 40 degrees. The reason for that, there will be some some drizzle and light rain throughout the day scattered not occurring all day long but scattered but enough to keep those temperatures down and winds will gust from the northeast at 20 miles per hour the sun is coming out say it with me guys tomorrow, tomorrow. yeah we're gonna see sunshine finally uh, at around lunch and temperatures will be in the 60s and 70s in the week ahead Ooh. thank you sarah hey we're in mardi gras season right mm -hmm. now so our jonathan Cotto will be live for their mardi, mardi gras river parade that's happening later today see you at 8 a.m 
light drizzle out there and even uh, some light rain showers, but it is cold this morning. Temperatures above freezing in San Antonio. We're not worried about freezing drizzle here in San Antonio, but look up toward Bernie Sage Airfield and Kerrville. Those temperatures are dipping below freezing, so there could be some very light freezing drizzle up there. No major impacts expected from that. Otherwise, some drizzle out near Gonzalez and Hallettsville and here today in San Antonio. We're going to have scattered drizzle and light rain all day. High only of 40. Good morning. It's cold out there this morning. Uh, temperatures are in the mid 30s, even in the low 30s in some spots. It's 35 at San Antonio International Airport, 36 at Port SA. We are going to remain above freezing in San Antonio, but stay cold. A high temperature only near 40. Take a look up toward the hill country in Kendall and Kerr counties. Temperatures are hovering right near freezing in Kerrville and at Bernie Stage Airfield. A wider view here, and you can see that's below freezing in Rock Springs and up in Fredericksburg as well. Uh, now temperatures are going to warm up from here on out, but in those areas there is some very light precipitation, some very light drizzle up near Kerrville and in Fredericksburg this morning. That's where we could have a light, very light glazing on elevated surfaces, but not really concerned about major impacts up there. Meanwhile, some uh, healthy drizzle for Gonzalez in Hallisville and Seguin, and today in San Antonio we're going to have on and off again drizzle and light rain, a high temperature only of 40 degrees cold here and we're going to have damp conditions at times with some light drizzle and some light rain throughout the day. High temperature today only 40 degrees so cold today with winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour but the sun's coming out tomorrow at noon. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. Big flames seen on Loop 410 overnight an SUV catching fire filling with flames what we now know this morning. Still very oh. cold outside, 35 degrees. Those clouds hanging around at 8 o'clock this morning. Sarah says, don't worry, there is hope in our future. She'll, say, she'll explain <laughs> next. Just good, a bit. good morning. It is Saturday, February 26th. I appreciated the gloomy start, but don't worry. Our hope is here. Sarah. Sarah Spivey, our ray of sunshine. Sarah Spivey. Oh you can tell how much we don't like this cold weather, right? We're, Absolutely We're hoping not. for something different. But guys, we got to get through today. Today is going to be a gray and cold day and at times damp. But we will see the sun in this weekend forecast. I'll show you that in just a bit. For now, let's start with temperatures this chilly morning. It's 36 at the airport, 33 in Bulverde, 35 in Holotus, 40 in, at Stinson, 37 in New Braunfels. Notice that it's just at freezing up at Bernie Stage Airfield, just at freezing in Kerrville, and just below freezing in Lost Maples. Uh, we do have some light precipitation out there in the form of some drizzle and, and some sprinkles. Across the hill country, those areas that I just showed you that were below freezing, that could actually be light freezing drizzle, but we don't expect any impacts from that. The only thing you may see up in Kerrville and up in Fredericksburg this morning is a light glazing of ice on elevated surfaces. Other Otherwise, there's some uh, swath of uh, light drizzle moving up north into Bear County as we speak and out toward Luling, Gonzalez, Floresville, seeing some of that light drizzle. I've turned up the intensity on this radar because again, this is very, very light stuff. It is not going to amount to much at all today, but we are going to carry the chance for drizzle and light rain throughout the day today. So kind of just a blah day out there where you're going to want to uh, stay warm because the high temperature should only only top off near 40 degrees, but we mentioned a little hope and that's coming tomorrow. Sunny skies by noon tomorrow to round out your weekend, so we will get some time to enjoy outdoors. We'll show you a more detailed look at that radar and talk about the week ahead in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, investigators working to figure out what exactly started a vehicle fire on 410 overnight. So if you were driving down the highway near Starcrest around 1030 last night, you may have seen these flames. The SUV fully engulfed when officers arrived. Luckily, they didn't find anyone inside. It appears to have been an abandoned vehicle on the westbound lanes of 410. Firefighters able to get the flames out rather quickly and keep traffic moving. Luckily, no injuries were reported. The CDC pulling back some of the mask requirements in different areas based on their local numbers. So counties are designated as either high, medium or low, depending on the number of new COVID-19 cases, new hospitalizations and hospital capacity. In the low levels, masks are no longer recommended. But of course, people who choose to wear one can still do so 
Looking at our area, the CDC places Comal County in the low category, Kendall County in the medium category, and Bear County, well, we're still in the high category. That means officials are still recommending that people mask up indoors when they're in public here in San Antonio. And speaking of being local, here's a look at the local numbers as of yesterday. For the past week, we've averaged 314 new cases per day. Metro Health also reporting five more people have died because of COVID. There are also more COVID patients in our local hospitals. And more now than what we saw two months ago around Christmas. As of last night, 365 COVID patients in our local hospitals. Of them, 84 in the ICU, 41 on ventilators. Now to the latest on the attack on Ukraine. Now this is a live look at the capital Kiev right now. It's about four in the afternoon there. Russian troops continue to storm towards Kiev and street fights are starting to break out. And just this morning, the United States authorizing $350 million in new military assistance to Ukraine. All of this according to Secretary of State Antony Blinken. So the Russian soldiers advancing today as city officials urge residents in Kiev to take shelter. Through the violence, Ukraine's president refusing America's offer to evacuate, insisting that he would stay. That's right. So as dawn broke in Kiev, it wasn't immediately clear how far the soldiers had advanced. Fights reported on the edges of the city suggested that small Russian units were checking out Ukrainian defenses to clear a path for the main forces. The street fights followed violence that struck bridges, schools, apartment buildings and resulted in hundreds, if not thousands of casualties. We're following this throughout the morning, the latest on the situation, and we're going to have updates throughout the newscast. Back here at home, Stephen Cavazos has a weekend traffic update for us. If you have weekend travel plans, be on the lookout. A few construction spots will be happening. Let's go ahead and start here off of 35. Some road work that started on Monday, February 21st will last until Saturday, February 26th. This starts from 9 in the morning, but we'll be wrapping up in the afternoon around 530. Drivers can expect the single northbound frontage road lane to be closed from FM 2252 to Schwab Road for sidewalk, headwall, and rail work. So watch out there. Let's go ahead and take that drive over to the northwest side here off of 1604. Some bridge widening work that actually started on Monday, February 14th. That will last till Saturday, February 26th. Keep in mind, though, this is going to be happening in the morning hours at 9 in, 9 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. Drivers, you can expect the westbound and eastbound turnaround closure at Loop 1604 and Chase Hill Boulevard, a full alternating turnaround closure. But keep in mind, only one direction will be closed at a time. Let's take that drive down here to 410 right at Culebra, where there's been some road work that started on February 21st. That, last will, until, that will last until Monday, February 28th, from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Also, drivers there can expect a double northbound main lane closures from Ingram Road to Calebra Road. As we get ready to start the weekend, make sure that you drive safe, buckle up, keep both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Well, if you're looking to celebrate Mardi Gras, no need to head out to New Orleans. Happening today, the Riverwalk will be transforming into complete floating Mardi Gras celebration. John of the Cota is one of the coolest live shots of the morning. Join us live from the Riverwalk with more on what you can expect if you plan to head out. Good, uh, good morning, Jonathan. Very jealous. Look at those beads. <laughs> Good morning. Do you like these beads? These are courtesy of Maggie Thompson, director of River Operations. We're here in full gear, full swing, and motivated to, to celebrate Mardi Gras with everyone here in San Antonio. Maggie, talk to us a little bit about what folks can expect if they're planning to head out to the Riverwalk later today. Well, today's the day to, to have fun down here on the Riverwalk for Mardi Gras. We have a festival from 1 to 8 up in La Villita and on the Arnis and lots of bands, lots of Mardi Gras music. And then we have a wonderful river parade, four to eight. Everything is free. So come on down, get the kids out of the house, enjoy the day. We've got New Orleans Mardi Gras weather today, so it should be great. You said free, and I've always said if it's free, I'll take three. Now, we're talking about the weather. It is cold, but that shouldn't discourage anyone from coming out. As you mentioned, this is typical Mardi Gras New Orleans weather here happening. Um, talk to me a little bit about these floats, though. They look absolutely gorgeous. Well, we'll have 12 floats in the parade, and on every float, we'll have a wonderful, we call them showstoppers, somebody elaborately dressed. We'll throw beads. Uh, oh, the people on the river. There's not a bad place to sit on the river walk at all. Wherever you are, you can catch some beads, get something to eat, enjoy a beverage. So come on down. There you have it, folks. And I've already caught my beads. We're in full gear and ready for the celebration. Max, Sarah, this all starts this afternoon at 4. We'll bring you more details in the next half hour. Back to you in the studio.
Thank all you, right. Jonathan. Jonathan Cota, one of the best lob shots. I, know, I like I liked his beads. Yeah. All good. right. Time now, 8.08, 36 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, go Spurs, go! Oh my goodness. So, what can I say? DeJounte Murray, Jakob Podol, Keldon Johnson, double overtime and another win. Another game closer to a record-breaking milestone for Coach Pop. We're going to have all the details. Plus, how you can save money if you're planning to get away for spring break. And Sarah Spivey will tell us what we can expect weather-wise for this weekend. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. With more and more people in the United States vaccinated, more and more people are starting to travel, starting to get that travel bug. So this spring break is being anticipated as one of the most travel times of the year. So whether you're thinking about getting away just for a few days or for a few weeks, there are some insider travel tips that can save you time and money. That's right. RJ Marquez explains. Whether you're dreaming of this or something like this, there are ways to save money on your spring travels. I would use like kayak when you're buying for plane tickets. First, plan to fly on a Tuesday or Wednesday or in the afternoon on Saturday to bag cheaper domestic flights. Save even more money by booking the first or last flight of the day. You can plug in your home airport and getaway location into Google Flights or Kayak Explorer to see the cheapest times to fly. And sign up for free email alerts, sites such as Google Flights, Scott's Cheap Flights, or Airfare Watchdog to get early access to coupon codes and flash sales. Consider buying a vacation package. Online travel agencies lock in lower fares early and combine them with cheap hotel stays. Also, consider different lodging options. Red Week is a timeshare rental platform that allows any traveler to book a trip from a timeshare owner that isn't using it. One recent price comparison? Marriott's Aruba Surf Club for seven nights. Booking it through this Red Week saved the buyer $500. And daily deal sites have gotten in on the act too, but you have to be ready to purchase immediately. And don't forget to take advantage of the best rate guarantees from hotel chains when booking directly. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. If you are looking to go for a vacation, today would be the day because 36 out. <laughs> is not ideal, Sarah it's by me. No, and it's, as you can see, it's just kind of gross looking out there, wow. right? You know, we've got drizzle, we've got light rain, and even in some areas across the hill country, some patchy freezing drizzle is occurring in, in some of these areas, mainly up near Kerrville. So let's get down to business. Let's take a look at the radar first and foremost. Now, the thing to know is I turned up the intensity of this radar higher so that you could actually see the drizzle uh, on the radar. All of this is very, very light. It is not going to amount to much today at all. But you can see that pink color there on your uh, map. It's very light, but between Kerrville and Bernie, temperatures are right at freezing and all the way up to Fredericksburg as well. So there very well could be some very light freezing drizzle, not impacting the roads. Uh, but if you are in Fredericksburg, Kerrville, let us know what you're seeing. You can email me at spivy at ksat.com or post your pictures on the KSAT Weather Authority app. That's just kind of a wow factor thing there going up across the hill country. Uh, we're not expecting anything freezing here in San Antonio. We're above freezing. We're going to stay above freezing for the day. But as you can see, some light rain and some drizzle pushing up to the north toward Luling, Gonzalez, Seguin, Floresville. And we're starting to see a swath of drizzle work its way into Bear County and into San Antonio. In fact, some of the cameras, the Transguide cameras are starting to get a little bit of that drizzle as the swath moves north into downtown. And we're going to have this on and off again, light drizzle, uh, light rain situation throughout the day today, keeping things cool for us. Let's take a look at those temperatures that I mentioned. Again, notice that at Bernie Stage Airfield and in Kerrville, temperatures are right at freezing, and that's why there could be some light freezing drizzle up there. Meanwhile, it's 36 in San Antonio and 36 at JBSA Randolph, 37 in New Braunfels, 38 in Hondo, a wider view here. The temperature sensor at Del Rio is out this morning, but they're working to fix that. 39 in Catula and 37 in Beeville. Winds this morning are from the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and that's where they're going to be today. So throughout the day today, we're going to have a wind chill. It feels like it's 31 degrees in San Antonio, and it feels like it's 28 in New Braunfels. You can expect a wind chill about
about five degrees cooler than what the thermometer reads today. And as we take a look at Doppler and radar and satellite, you can see what I mean by on and off again drizzle because we got this one round of drizzle and then another round working its way up from Corpus Christi. And uh, unfortunately, again, it's just not going to amount to any significant uh, number here in San Antonio. We may see up to a tenth of an inch of light rain, but that's about it. Higher rainfall totals may be up to a quarter of an inch out east toward our coastal communities. And in the evening hours, that rain will come to an end. High temperatures today going to be chilly. We'll only top off near 40 degrees in the Alamo City, upper 30s in the Hill Country. Out toward Del Rio, you'll get up to about 50 today. Warm spot on the map, but still pretty chilly. So throughout the day today, 40% chance for on and off again drizzle and light rain. As I mentioned, temperatures pretty much coasting where they're at, topping off only near 40 degrees. Northeast winds today at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. But take a look at how temperatures rebound. Tomorrow, our afternoon high is going to be 60. We'll start the day tomorrow with some clouds, but by noon, skies are going to clear, and we are finally going to see some sun here in San Antonio for the first time since Wednesday. It is going to be nice to welcome that sun back uh, tomorrow and the afternoon hours and then temperatures in the 70s by the middle of the week as we start March and start thawing out. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 817, 36 degrees out. Go Spurs, go. Oh my goodness, what a game. What a win last night. Double OT. We're going to have highlights in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go. The Spurs beginning their second half of the rodeo road trip last night, and get this, double OT in D.C. Coach Pop now only two games away from the all-time NBA wins record. Let's take a look. Let's say, can we take a look? Are we going to have highlights? Either way. All right, so we got DeJounte Murray coming off of All-Star Weekend, and he came out hot. A triple-double, another triple-double. We had Keldon Johnson hot from outside the arc, dropping three after three. Devin Vassell, an unknown star throughout the league, but if you're in San Antonio, it's one of those if you know, you know, and we know here. Wizards managed to tie the game. The Spurs getting the final shot in OT. DeJounte went for the three. He just missed the mark, so we went to the first OT. So DeJounte got another chance at the overtime. Not to mention, Lonnie Walker came out hot. He threw down the hammer. Beautiful dunk, really ESPN top 10. So we went to second OT. The Spurs held on, and I got to say, DeJounte, his triple-double, Keldon from three, Jakob doing it all. It was something to see for the ages, a double overtime. I stayed up too late to watch, but it was well worth it. 157 to 153. Go, Spurs, go. Well, that's a great example of a pound in the rock. They just kept playing. Uh, never gave in, made mistakes, did some good things, made some mistakes, did some good things. I was a little tired, uh, you know, but when you're trying to win basketball games, there, there's no excuse. Uh, so, you know, I, I fought through it and, you know, the team fought through it and we came out with a, a huge team win. Huge team win, that is for sure. The Spurs playing back-to-back, -back, now headed to Miami, taking on the Miami Heat, tip-off set for 7 p.m. this evening. And don't worry, we're not just talking NBA. We got some high school hoops highlights coming up right after the break. See you then. Good morning and welcome back. High school basketball playoffs now. The Harlan Hawks going up against the Clark Cougars, deciding who is going to the regional championship, which is happening later today. So, Cougars moving the ball. Natalie Huff, Aaliyah Roberson in the lane. Ariana Roberson under for the hoop bucket and six-point lead. Harlan responds. Layla Conley, Vivian Via puts it up and it is in. Clark lead is trimmed to two. Roberson wide open down low. Clark takes an eight-point lead in halftime and... They hold the lead. They would go on to win. Wait for it. Bang! They win by 10, 51-41. Next up, Cougs taking on the Steel Knights after they got the win over Brennan yesterday, 71-56. We're going to have all the highlights. KSAT.com, Clark and Steel play at 2 today. The Class 6A Regional Finals with a trip to the UIL State Tournament on the line. So, from girls to boys. Boys basketball last night. Class 5A area round. Bang! Bernie Champion taking on Jefferson Mustangs. Ooh, trying to rally in the fourth. Joseph Roncon kicked it out. 
Aaron for the three, and he'd make it a 12-point game, but the Chargers come alive from the distance. Look at that. Beautiful passing, swinging around the perimeter. Jesse for a corner three, dropping it in. Four Chargers finished in double figures. Champion, pulling it away. They're the champions. They win it 68-47. to Hey, welcome back. Thank you. Congrats to all of our local teams out there. That's exciting. Yeah, and of course, congrats to the Spurs. All right, just about 827, 36 degrees out. We still had on GMSA, we're celebrating the rodeo, but also Black History Month, and we have the perfect story that honors both. All right, and we're going to give an inside look at one of the coolest new features of San Antonio. Port SA's amazing new stadium. It is state of the art. RJ Marquez giving us an inside look. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy weekend. 8.30 this morning, Saturday, February 26th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We are in the thick of winter, and it still feels like that. Yeah, um, before we talk about weather real quick, Max, do you have something you want to tell the viewers? About your little oh, about yeah. your injury. <laughs> so we're sitting today, which is, you know, unique to us. We haven't sat in, what, two years now? It's been a while, yeah. It's been pre-pandemic. Last time I had my injury. <laughs> yeah, so I tore my Achilles playing basketball. So for the foreseeable future, we will be sitting at the desk. So I appreciate you working with me. So keep, you keep with your me. thoughts. Keep yeah. us in your thoughts. I got the, uh, the fancy heels. big boot today, but I get a full cast on Monday. So I'll be all hopping around on crutches. But for now... We're talking weather. Max. 36 degrees out there. Sarah Spivey. Can I sign your cast? You can. If I if I am allowed to have people sign it, you can sign it. We should do like a GMSA it. little artist thing. We should. Cast. We should. Yeah. But in all seriousness. In all seriousness. We'll put a mural on there and everything. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to be serious now, uh -huh. guys. Wish you a speedy recovery. Thank you, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, but let's take a look outside. It's cold out there this morning. We're dealing with some drizzle and some mist in many areas. It's 36 at the airport, 36 at JBSA Randolph, 37 in New Braunfels, 36 in Canyon Lake, 38 in Hondo, 37 in Rio Medina. Take a look up into the hill country. Bernie Stage Airfield at freezing. Kerrville at freezing, Comfort and Bandera just above freezing. And in these areas, there may be some very light freezing drizzle. It is not anticipated to cause any kind of problems on the roads. But if you do live up in Kerrville, Comfort, Bernie, you may see a light glazing on elevated surfaces. Elsewhere, look at the uh, drizzle and light rain that's occurring for areas around San Antonio, Seguin, Gonzalez, Luling. It's pushing to the north. These uh, Areas of drizzle and light rain are going to come in waves today. Scattered light rain that is not going to amount to much, unfortunately, just to make it a little icky outside and definitely cold. It is the last weekend of the rodeo, and if you're going out to the rodeo this weekend, know that today it's going to be chilly. 40% chance for drizzle and light rain all day long. A high temperature only of 40 degrees. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. And we did just get the pollen count in. Pollen count at least, there's some good news there. It looks good. The only allergen present is mold and it's low, but hey, guess what? I'm looking forward to the sunshine and it is gonna come out tomorrow by lunch. So we'll talk about that and the week ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories this morning, a call to action. Child abuse prevention advocates are calling on city, state leaders, and religious leaders to do more to stop child abuse. The father and stepmother of a four-year-old child that died six months ago have been arrested. This is the third arrest this month of caretakers facing charges in a fatal child abuse investigation. A child abuse prevention educator says the community needs to put more pressure on state agencies responsible and local leaders need to put more funding towards prevention and education, but it's also the responsibility of the community. We really need our faith leaders to speak to this. Our families are starving for moral compassing. If you suspect child abuse of any kind, please call 911. All right, obviously sirens going off in Ukraine throughout the last couple of days. It has been a literal war zone. Right now we know Russia invading the capital of Kyiv. We know hundreds of thousands of people fleeing Ukraine, but a lot of people staying and fighting for their homeland. But the city of San Antonio standing with Ukraine. Look at those lights there. The city hall is lit up with Ukraine colors. Last night, the colors of the Ukraine flag 
on City Hall. All right, so with missiles flying and Russian troops fighting their way into the country, hundreds of thousands of desperate Ukrainians fleeing their home, creating a potential humanitarian crisis. ABC's Aaron Katarski is in the grounds in the ground to live with the latest on the refugees trying to leave the country. This morning, hundreds of thousands of people are rushing to flee Ukraine, pouring into train stations, pushing against checkpoints, and waiting hours. ABC's Matt Gutman spoke to some families who made the long journey to Poland. How long have you been driving? It was 24 hours just in this line here. Yeah. An American Juan Tech and his Ukrainian wife Alonia traveling roughly 30 hours from Kyiv to the Polish border. And uh, I want to say I want to come back, but I don't know if we're going to come back. With so many struggling to escape, humanitarian organizations like Project Dynamo are trying to help. They start a war, we start a rescue. Some of our people were afraid to travel. They didn't want to go on the street. They didn't know what was happening. Some of them um, uh, didn't think that we'd get a bus. You know, they're, they're shelling, therefore buses won't drive. Many of the displaced are seeking shelter in train stations like this one in Poland, bringing only needed documents and the luggage they can carry. And these images show the traffic stretching roughly four miles near the Romanian border. At the border with Slovakia, fathers saying their goodbyes to wives and families. For those left behind, there are growing fears of the Russian advance. Here in Lviv, we saw desperate attempts to hold back the invading army. The men in this country cannot leave. They've been conscripted into the fight. And without advanced weapons, they're doing what they can to protect their neighborhoods. They're filling sandbags. They've got tires, this makeshift checkpoint. They're also filling bottles with gasoline for Molotov cocktails. As neighborhoods empty out, families torn apart make whatever plans they can to try to survive. Many mothers have been left alone to care for their children as they wait in the cold for border guards to let them through. It's going to be very scary for a mom. You seem very composed, very okay. No, it's not okay. You're not feeling okay. It's for kids. It's for the kids. That was Aaron Katerski reporting. So a couple from San Antonio is among the thousands trying to flee Ukraine during the Russian invasion. They had plans to escape to Poland, but with traffic backed up for miles at the border and men technically no longer able to leave Ukraine, the family had a tough decision to make as the wife is expecting their first child. They are very Western Ukraine right now, and they are safe uh, for the moment. And Andre is still trying to get to her. And so um, he's stuck in traffic. It's crazy. It's crazy. Alicia Barretta shares their story that has captured the hearts of many here at home. You can watch the full story right now on KSAT.com. And speaking of here at home, City Council approving contracts for community partners to implement the $185 million SA Ready to Work Education and Job Placement Program. So the goal of this program is to place more than 28,000 people into either certification or degree programs, get at least 15,700 local people into high quality in demand jobs. The launch is set for April. So to better explain the program, the benefits to families and local community members, how to enroll and if you are eligible to be part of it, the director of the initiative of Michael Ramsey joining us on Leading Essay tomorrow at 8 a.m. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. But now we talk about Mardi Gras. We've yeah. been checking in with Jonathan Cotto throughout the morning. Last time we checked, he had the beads on. Yeah, time to party. Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday is, is Tuesday. It's mm -hmm. coming Tuesday. Ash Wednesday is Wednesday. And San Antonio at the Riverwalk, they are going to be having a parade. That's where we find our Jonathan Cotto. Whoa! Yes, <laughs> I love it, Jonathan. You are ready wow. to party. <laughs> Yes, I know. So last time you checked, I had the beads on. Now I have the mask on for, for a number of reasons. One, it, it really is keeping my face warm. And then when Maggie wasn't looking, I just snuck into her chest of, of costumes and beads. We're having a good time, right, Maggie? All right, great, Tom. And you have a perpetual smile now. I have it. There it is. Now, Maggie, um, Mardi Gras is a time of celebration, music, food. You know, it's a, it's a very popular uh, celebration. Why does it take place? Let us know a little bit about Mardi Gras. Well, Mardi Gras, the words is a Fat Tuesday, and that's the night before Ash Wednesday, which brings in Lent. So it's a, a couple of weeks celebration before to bring in, a, you know, a religious holiday. Now, what has the preparation, the effort that's gone uh, to make this possible, this Mardi Gras with the San Antonio twist possible? What does that look like? Well, a lot of cities have a Mardi Gras celebration, so we do too. We like to party, and, and so it uh, we decorate floats, we get sponsors to be on the boats we throw beads we have a parade we have a festival so it takes a while to get that going but wow san antonio loves it 
Well, thank you so much, Maggie, for being with us this morning. Max, Sarah, on these floats will be just a number of showstoppers. There's going to be live music out at the Arneson Theater, and it's just going to be a fun, fun time. And it's all going to be taking place from 4 to 6 p.m. Back to you in the studio, Max, Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. I love it. She's like, San Antonio loves it. I was like, San Antonio loves to party? No way. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Just about 840, 36 degrees out. All right, coming up next, a look at the new indoor tech arena on the southwest side and what it's hoping to bring to that side of town. Southwest side will soon be home to an indoor arena that is already attracting major shows and entertainment, the new Tech Port Center. And Arena at Port San Antonio is being called one of the most technologically advanced centers in the country. The gaming center will feature 60 individual stations, monitors, and broadcast capabilities that can compete with other major cities, giving new opportunities for students in the area. We want people to come here every day. We want the south side to embrace it. It's their building too. We want the west side to embrace it. It's their building too. All of San Antonio can come. The crown jewel of this entire place is the brand new 3100 seat venue that will host concerts, other entertainment events, and esports tournaments. The facility is expected to be completed in early April. All right, that looks, looks beautiful. That looks so cool. Very jealous of RJ. Oh my goodness. Yuck. Middle of the cloud, Sarah? Yeah, those, those uh, cloud ceilings are lowering here as we're starting to get some more mist and drizzle out there around San Antonio. It's a cold mist and drizzle, guys. It's in the 30s. Even in some places in the hill country, still flirting with that freezing mark. But let's take a look across the state of Texas because it's cold everywhere you look. 13 in Amarillo, 17 in Lubbock. Even in Corpus Christi this morning, it's 39 degrees. 36 in San Antonio, 36 up in Austin. And notice that temperatures are starting to get back above freezing up in the hill country. Kerrville was just at 32 now at 33. I expect Bernie Sage Air, Air, Airfield to go above uh, freezing as well. And so that light potentially freezing drizzle up in the hill country, it's just going to be all liquid here in just a sec. A 36 at Port SA, 40 at Simpson, 35 in Seguin. And let's go ahead and take a look at the radar here. Off to the east, you can see quite a bit of a light drizzle. This is very, very light uh, returns on the radar here. I had to turn up the intensity so that we could see it a little bit better. But there up in the hill country, you can see those flecks of uh, pink. That's that very light, potentially freezing drizzle that's pushing off to the north and is not going to cause any problems on the roads. But off to the east, some uh, heavier drizzle and light rain moving into Gonzales, moving through Luling, moving through Seguin and Floresville. And even in Bear County here, we've got some uh, mist and drizzle on the east side of town, on the eastern part of Loop 1604, out to Seguin and Lavernia. And throughout the day today, we're going to see these waves of light drizzle and light uh, rain. And uh, you can see that on the camera there. This is I. Uh, that was 410 at Jackson Keller, and this is 410 at Perrin Bidal. You can see that the roads are slightly damp from that light drizzle and mist. But here's the thing. We're really not going to see all that much. It's not going to amount to much, maybe up to a tenth of an inch of rain in some places today. But the past few days have really been just a nuisancey kind of rain that hasn't amounted to much, about three hundredths of an inch in Bernie, a one hundredth of an inch in San Antonio National Airport. This is since Wednesday, since our cold snap began. And even right now at the airport, you can see those drops of uh, light rain there on the camera and some fog has developed, but really it, it is not going to be substantial at all for us today, just making it gray and cold. Winds are from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour, so that's actually giving us a wind chill. Even though it's 36, it feels like it's 31. It feels like it's 28 in Kerrville and 28 in New Braunfels. And throughout the day today, we're going to have a 40% chance for that passing drizzle and light rain uh, that'll be moving through San Antonio in waves. By tonight, though, more just sprinkles. And uh, temperatures are going to hold steady pretty much in the upper 30s and near 40 degrees. 40 will be the high temperature today, well below the average. The average high is 69 degrees. So we're going to be almost 30 degrees cooler than average with northeast winds gusting up to 20 miles per hour. But there is hope in tomorrow's forecast. We'll start off cold and cloudy right around 38. But by lunch, we're going to see sunshine and our temperatures will start to rise. And by the afternoon, we'll be looking at 60 sunny degrees in San Antonio and across south central Texas tomorrow. It's going to be a lovely day and a nice respite from the cold that we've been
been dealing with since Wednesday. And looking into next week, no cold snaps for us. We'll just start a warming trend. By Tuesday, we'll be at 70 degrees. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, we could use some healthy rain and none of that is in the forecast for us over the next seven days. Just this annoying drizzle and light rain that we've got going on today. Max and Sarah. It's very annoying. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 848, 36 degrees out. The rodeo is going on right now, but it's also Black History Month. Coming up next, how one woman broke the rodeo bar barriers to help make this year the most diverse in history. All right, welcome back today and tomorrow, the final days of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and this year, likely to be the most diverse in Stock Show and Rodeo history. And there's a local woman who's part of the reason why. Ursula Perry explains how a unique friendship helped the first black woman on the women's pro circuit break through the rodeo barrier. I love this. I, oh, girl. Betty Jo Williams has been riding since 12 years old, thrown into the saddle by her uncle. Just hold on, she'll do the work. And that's all I did was sit there and hold on. And every time a calf got by, hey, she was after it. Even at age 68, it doesn't take much to get her boots back in the stirrups. She can still do a barrel pattern, albeit a little slower than the good old days when she was breaking into the rodeo circuit. Yeah, I, w I was the only black girl there. This was back in the early 80s when her friend and rodeo partner Sherry Mel was winning world championships. These two San Antonio women have been through thick and thin together. I got her in the Women's Pro Rodeo Association and uh, she started going to the all-girl rodeos with me. She competed right there beside me. She wasn't just there as a sidekick. She was competing. And she helped Betty Jo, sort of her wingman, when being the only black woman on the circuit caused a stir. She kind of got a little timid and say, you know I'm the only, onlyest black one here? And I said, well, that's okay. You're here to do the same thing everybody else is doing, you know? They knew I was with Sherry Mail. They know she's gonna say something. <laughs> so she kind of, you know, so Sherry was kind of your protector on the circuit. Yes. She never gave up on me. She was always, I got a horse, anything, everything, just come. It'll do it for you. Betty Jo recently had surgery on her knee. She hasn't been riding very much, but as you can see, she's a natural. She'll be back at it anytime now. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Well, like we said, today and tomorrow, your final opportunities to check out the rodeo. The grounds are open till 11 p.m. and the carnival opens at 10 a.m. Just take out your phone right now. You can scan that QR code on your screen. It will take you to our website where you can find more information. All right, time now, just about 8.54, 36 degrees out. Let's take a look at some lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, five, two, fireball four, daily four, one, five, five, eight, fireball four. And your cash five, five, nine, 23, 27, 30. And here we go. Did you play? No, it, it's not at 100 million. Oh, that's yeah. Sarah Costa's line of yep, demarcation. Yep, there it is. It's too cheap if it's under 100 <laughs> mil. Mega Millions, 15, 31, 40, 56, 66, big number four, Mega Pyre three. Good luck. We'll be right back. Happening today, Metro Health will be hosting a pop up clinic for anyone who needs to get their COVID 19 vaccine booster shot or flu shot. It will be at Scooby Middle School on Marbach Road in the gym from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. All three COVID-19 vaccines will be available for eligible adults and children. All right, if you're planning on staying in town for spring break, but you still want to keep the kids active, the Botanical Garden is hosting a chef camp March 14th through the 16th, camp designed for kids ages 8 to 12 years old. They're also taking registrations for its summer camp for children ages 5 to 17. You can register on the Botanical Gardens website for the first summer session, which starts June 6th. Time now, just about 8.57, 36 degrees out. Helping teens and young adults recognize what a loving relationship is and it, what it isn't. Straight ahead on GMSA, the story of a promise that can save lives. And drivers in shock as they saw an SUV up in flames on the highway. We have the latest details from police. Good morning and welcome back. Believe it or not, it's just about Mardi Gras time. Jonathan Coto joining us live downtown on the Riverwalk with more on today's Mardi Gras River Parade. Firefighters called out to the side of the highway after an SUV is spotted burning. Just look at that video on your screen. What they found when they got to the scene. 
And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. You can't see, can't see too much right now. Ooh, I think we're in the middle of a cloud. Is that what it is? Sure, we're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, nine o'clock this Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. Have you been outside today? No, I don't do well. You know, 36, I usually don't do 50, 50 degrees? Like, more like 60. Okay. But especially when it's a little damp out, it makes your bones really feel colder. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. And that's kind of the weather we're going to be dealing with all day today, passing uh, times of drizzle and light rain. And it'll make the roads damp in places. Take a look at Transkai. This is 281, uh, that flyover there at 410. You can see those roads are damp. And as we continue to look around the city, that's 1604 at John Peace and 37 at Hackberry. Plenty of moisture there on these cameras this morning. And it is cold though out there. Take a look at the uh, radar. Areas of drizzle pushing up to the north now making its way into New Braunfels and Comal County. We're not seeing much precipitation out in Bandera County, but a few uh, flecks of light rain moving across I-10 between Kerrville and Bernie. But as you can see, most of the rain right now concentrated along and east of 281. We're seeing some light rain in Gonzales, Luling, and up toward San Marcos as well. Temperatures this morning starting to get above freezing in the hill country. Technically, it's still 32 degrees at Bernie stage field, but we're not concerned anymore about any kind of possibility for light freezing drizzle up there as uh, it will have no impacts across that area and temperatures are rising above freezing like in Bandera where it's 33. 36 at JBSA Randolph, 37 in New Braunfels, 36 in Canyon Lake, 35 in Divine and today's forecast calls for a high temperature of only 40 degrees. We're really not going to warm up all that much and the reason for that is again we'll have passing uh, areas and waves of drizzle and light rain throughout the day today. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 20. That's going to put a wind chill in the air. It'll feel about 5 to 10 degrees colder than what the thermometer actually reads. So cold, cloudy and somewhat damp at times here in San Antonio today, but the sun will return tomorrow. We're going to be soaking up that sun after lunch tomorrow and that'll lead into a beautiful spring like week. I'll show you those uh, much improved high temperatures coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. New this morning, firefighters and investigators trying to figure out what exactly caused a fire in a vehicle on 410 overnight. So if you were on 410 near Starcrest around 1030 last night, you may have seen these flames. An SUV fully engulfed when officers arrived. Luckily, no one inside. It appears to have been abandoned on the westbound lanes of 410. Firefighters telling us they were able to get the flames under control rather quickly. Keep traffic moving. No injuries have been reported. Well, fire breaks out this morning at a home on the city's west side. Firefighters were called out to this home in the 200 block of Cortez Avenue. When they arrived, they saw the outside of the home had flames. No one was home at the time and no injuries were reported. Firefighters looking into what started this fire. All right, so we've been talking about throughout the morning. Fat Tuesday is this coming Tuesday, but... We don't wait to party here in San Antonio. No, we love to party. There's a party on the river today. It's where we find our Jonathan Cotto live with more on the city's Mardi Gras River Parade. Good morning, Jonathan. Okay, Aww. well, it looks like we're having a technical issue with Jonathan. We're going to check back in with him in just a little bit. But for now, we got to tell you about a big hiring fair going on, Pre-K for SA, looking to hire multiple positions. Right now, they're hosting a job fair at the East Education Center at 5230 Eisenhower Road. Officials say they're looking for teachers, assistant teachers, aides, administrative associates, and substitute teachers. So they say some applicants, get this, you might even be interviewed on the spot. You have a few hours left to head out there. The job fair ends at noon. And this is it. This is the last weekend of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. So you, if you haven't made it out, the AT&T Center and Freeman Coliseum, the clock is ticking the gate. The clock is ticking. The gates open today at 8 and the finals are tonight at 7 o'clock. For details of what's going on today, just pick up your phone right now. You can scan that QR code on your screen and I'll take you to our website. We'll give you all of the latest. All right. So we promised you a preview of the party. We're going to deliver. Jonathan Cotto joining us live from the river. So, Jonathan, how does it look out there? It is looking great. These parades are really, these floats are really, really cool. And this is exactly where those showstoppers will be on later this, this afternoon. Maggie, um, Mardi Gras 
here in San Antonio. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Well, the whole country loves to celebrate Mardi Gras. And if you can't make it to New Orleans, come to San Antonio. It's a great place to have it. So we have our Mardi Gras festival and parade today. Festivals one to eight, the parade's four to six. And it will float around the Riverwalk. There's no bad seat on the Riverwalk. Any place you go is great. Now, Maggie, it's cold outside. That's no secret. For those folks that are like, hey, I am not going downtown. It is way too cold. What are your words for them? Well, it's Mardi Gras weather. This is what they experience in New Orleans. They're used to it. And it's a really a good day for a parade. With live music, food, entertainment, these gorgeous floats, it's going to be a good time. Max, Sarah, this event's going to kick off at 4 this afternoon and we'll go till 6 p.m. It's going to be a great time. We'll have more details coming up in the next half hour. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jonathan Cotto, thank you so much. Jonathan, prepare because next half hour we're going to ask you to pick out your favorite float so far. And speaking of the River Parade, if you have big plans out and about this weekend, there is a lot going on in and around San Antonio that you need to be aware of. Stephen Cavazos has a weekend traffic update. If you have weekend travel plans, be on the lookout. A few construction spots will be happening. Let's go ahead and start here off of 35. Some road work that started on Monday, February 21st will last until Saturday, February 26th. This starts from 9 in the morning, but we'll be wrapping up in the afternoon around 530. Drivers can expect the single northbound frontage road lane to be closed from FM 2252 to Schwab Road for sidewalk, headwall, and rail work. So watch out there. Let's go ahead and take that drive over to the northwest side here off of 1604. Some bridge widening work that actually started on Monday, February 14th. That will last till Saturday, February 26th. Keep in mind, though, this is going to be happening in the morning hours at 9 in, 9 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. Drivers, you can expect the westbound to eastbound turnaround closure at Loop 1604 and Chase Hill Boulevard, a full alternating turnaround closure. But keep in mind, only one direction will be closed at a time. Let's take that drive down here to 410 right at Gulebna, where there's been some road work that started on February 21st. That, last will, until, that will last until Monday, February 28th, from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Also, drivers there can expect a double northbound main lane closures from Ingram Road to Calebda Road. As we get ready to start the weekend, make sure that you drive safe, buckle up, keep both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road. Guys? All right, Jonathan, or Jonathan, Stephen Guazos, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm already excited for Jonathan's next live shot. Time now, 9.07, 36 degrees out. Well, ending the cycle of domestic violence, inspiration from a promise to help young girls know what true love is, that story still ahead. All right, and get this, some local and area restaurants and their chefs, they're up from big time awards, the prestigious honor that they are all competing for. Have you gone through this list yet? No, have you? Yeah, there's some of my favorites on there. Oh, that we'll makes sense. We'll bring you some of those Ooh. in just a bit. But first, we're gonna take a look outside with live cam, 36 degrees. Nope, that's not live cam, but it is 36 degrees. There, there we go. Is. I mean, really not much to show anyways. If you are headed out to the Sox Show Rodeo, or the graphic you just saw, bring a jacket. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need it. Sarah Spivey has a weekend forecast when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio's restaurant community, it's a one of those if you know, you know. And finally, our fine dining is getting a lot of national attention. Seven area restaurants and five local chefs They've been named for semifinals for the James Beard Awards. Now, the awards recognize exceptional talent in the culinary and food media industries. Receiving a James Beard Award, it's considered a huge prestigious honor across the world. So to see a full list of our San Antonio area restaurants and our local chefs named semifinalists, just head to KSAT.com. Well, the Mexican Army put on an impressive show of force by the 1800 standard. Just march through downtown San Antonio. We're talking about La Gran Marcha de Ejército Mexicano. It's an annual event marking the arrival of the Mexican Army at the Alamo days before the Battle of the Alamo. I've covered this event. I'm sure you have too, Max. So this reenactment took place Wednesday. A news release states February 23rd is the day defenders of the Alamo realized they were outnumbered. You can watch that reenactment and take a look at a list of scheduled events being held next week to commemorate the Battle of the Alamo. Just log on to ksat.com. All right, so time now, 9-12. And Sarah Spivey, we've been stuck in the mid-30s throughout the morning. Yeah, and you know what? We're going to stay in the 30s no. for the majority of the day. <laughs> Why? Sorry, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'll give it to you honest. Yeah, we're going to top off maybe about like 40 degrees in San Antonio. So it's going to be cold all day long. And the reason, 
You're seeing it on your screen right now. Waves of drizzle and light rain. That's what we're going to be seeing today. It's not going to amount to much for us. Maybe a tenth of an inch of rain in San Antonio when the day is done, uh, but it is going to keep things pretty chilly today. Let's go ahead and take a look at some areas off to the east of San Antonio. This is the area that has the best chance for uh, a tenth to two tenths of an inch of rain and you can see that there's already more rain falling in Gonzales than there is in San Antonio. Some light rain at down near Cuero as well and even near Seguin uh, in Bear County. We're seeing this first wave of drizzle push out of the county into uh, New Braunfels and into Seguin. Very light rain up in Canyon Lake as well, but all in all of a pretty damp start to the day. The roads are damp from a, a wave of drizzle that moved through earlier around San Antonio. So give yourself a little bit extra time to get to where you need to go. We're also seeing uh, mist uh, and fog out there as those temperatures are close to the dew point. Visibility lowered to three miles uh, in San Antonio, lowered to a mile and a half in at Bernie Stage Airfield, lowered to four miles in Kerrville and down to two and a half. Drizzle will do that. And also again, the fact that the temperatures are close to the dew point. Those ceiling are lowering. It's cloudy all around South Central Texas, and we're going to stay in these clouds today. It's 37 in Hondo, 33 in Kerrville, 37 in New Braunfels, 37 in Gonzales, 36 here in San Antonio, below freezing up in Rock Springs. On top of the drizzle and the cloudy conditions, we've also got a wind from the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. It could gust up to about 20 miles per hour, and that is strong enough to give us a wind chill. It feels like it's 29 degrees in San Antonio, even though it's in the mid 30s. Feels like it's 29 in New Braunfels, 28 in Kerrville, 33 in Pleasanton. So it is going to be a cold day. Even if you're not getting the rain, you're going to get the wind and those clouds. So take a look at the future cast today. Again, we'll see lighter rain around San Antonio, a waves of drizzle and light rain through lunch and into the afternoon as well with the heavier amounts, but still not very substantial out to the uh, east and by the evening hours our rain chances will come to an end. So it is going to be a chilly day. High temperature only around 40 in San Antonio, 39 in Kerrville out to the east uh, west rather. We'll see temperatures at 46 in Uvalde and up to 50 in Del Rio. Del Rio, you might get a little bit of clearing in the afternoon and that's why temperatures could get up to about 50 degrees. But otherwise 37 at 10, 38 at noon. See temperatures are just not going to budge all that much. 40 for the afternoon high, 40% chance for drizzle throughout the day and northeast winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Bring that jacket with you today, but guess what? Things turn around for the better tomorrow. We'll start off cloudy and cold at 38, but by noon, skies will clear. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be comfortable. It's going to be great tomorrow afternoon and even better into the week with temperatures rebounding nicely to 70 degrees by Tuesday. The one caveat is uh, even though we've seen some drizzle over the last couple of days, it has not amounted to much and it really hasn't helped out our drought situation. And in the week ahead, as we turn uh, the page on February and enter into March, we're not going to see any showers and storms in our forecast over the next seven days after today's drizzle and light rain showers. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 916, 36 degrees out. Oh, sleep. It's something that we all oh, just struggle. That looks familiar. <laughs> yeah, do a lot of that. All right, so the struggle to get a good night's sleep is real for many people. We really understand that here Valerian on GMSA. Root. Yeah, so coming up, what supplements can help you get a good night's rest? All right, and a family matriarch doing what she can to break the cycle of domestic violence in her family, what the family has endured, and how they plan to change the interpretation of love. First, take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, five, two, fireball four, daily four, one, five, five, eight, fireball four. Your cash five, five, nine, 23, 27, 30. Here we go, Mega Millions still not at that $100 million mark. So if you're Sarah Costa, you're not playing yet. But hey. here are the numbers, just in case. 15, 31, 40, 56, 66. Big number four, Mega Pyre three. Good luck, we'll be right back. All right, domestic violence. It is a big problem across the country. 
and across San Antonio. It includes physical and sexual violence and abuse, psychological aggression, and even at times stalking. One in three women and one in four men have actually been a victim of domestic violence. It's almost one in 20 people per minute who are being abused by someone they love, depend on, and trust. Really, it's a sad situation. So today, more than 20,000 phone calls will be placed to domestic violence hotlines. Many times, the violence is something that children, they grow up with. They see people around them doing it and experience again as adults. So as Stephanie Cerna reports, one mother is working to end the cycle of violence and keep a promise she made to her grandchild. This is my great-great-grandmother. We call her mama. One family matriarch after another, five generations of women, all victims of intimate partner violence. This story is being told by one of the youngest victims named Promise, who is now a teenager. And this is my family. They are all beautiful, but they all had bad things happen to them. It was our normal. It really was. It was what my family knew. One of the questions I'm often asked is, how is it possible? L.Y. Marlowe, Promise's grandmother, says the answer is simple. The answer is silence. My grandmother never talked to my mother about it. My mother never really talked to me about it. Marlowe's daughter was almost killed at the hands of Promise's father. That's when Marlowe began Saving Promise, an organization built to save young girls from continuing the cycle. They need us to, to empower them, to inspire them. Most importantly, experts say they need to be educated on what a good relationship looks like. Because something that's learned and uh, almost normalized in their life of what to expect in a relationship. Recognizing there is a problem is the first step to getting help. People don't always recognize their victim until they see something or hear something. Or that's why Marlo created Friends of Promise, calling on organizations, churches, businesses, book clubs, any group to download the program that will start the conversation to help break the silence. Imagine the type of change we can make and more importantly, the number of lives we could potentially save. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. So 41% of Gen Z and 34% of millennials have reported much higher rates of violence in the past year due to the stress and mental health struggles caused during the pandemic. So if you're a victim of someone who is committing domestic violence or you know anyone, you were asked to call the national hotline. That number is 1-800-799-SAFE or 1-800-799-7233. If you're in immediate danger, call 911. Time now is 923, 36 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Just about 927, 36 degrees out. Go Cowboys. Yeah, so there's always oh, a story. Did you see this on social yes. media? So this is fantastic. Troy Aikman in the Alamo City. We're gonna explain why he was, uh, he was here. He also, Michael Irvin was in town too. Yeah, I have a little David Elder story too. Oh. Maybe people have seen it on social media. Okay, so Americans with family in Ukraine are trying to find out if loved ones are safe and compassionate in the form of aid is making its way to Ukraine. More on this conflict overseas is next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 9.30 this morning. And I gotta say, we're starting off, okay, we've moved up. It's 37 now. Okay. Not much. We're moving on up. In my book, that's still like a, a heavy coat. Yeah, it's a heavy coat. It's a hat. It's, you know, long layers and then a fleece underneath. Did it. you wear the wow. full outfit from car to door? No, because okay. it was like a whole thing this morning. Yeah, and I just, was just booked it. I just booked it. I mean, I was real quick. Man, yes, and we're going to need to book it all day because you're really only going to go up another couple of degrees. High temperature forecast at only 40 today, and here's the reason why. We are dealing with waves of drizzle and light rain around the KSAT 12 viewing area. You'll notice that along and east of 35, that's where the uh, heaviest of this light rain is falling right now from Gonzales to Cuero, up toward Kyle and San Marcos area, New Braunfels, and even some drizzle up near Fredericksburg as well. And where we're not seeing drizzle actually falling, we are seeing uh, some mist and some fog out there this morning. So it's all around pretty damp out there this morning. And it's cold. It's 37 in Hondo, 37 in New Braunfels, 33 in Kerrville. Notice that it's below freezing in Rock Springs, but not for long. Temperatures will be warming up there, although not by all that much, just above freezing. 39 in Catula and 39 in Gonzales. So today, last Saturday of the rodeo, 
studio. Uh, if you're planning on being out there, it's rodeo weather. You know, this is the time of year where we get uh, nice, comfortable weather in February and also some chilly weather, and that's the case today. We'll have waves of drizzle and light rain throughout the day and topping off right near 40 degrees this afternoon. Breezy at times, winds northeast at 10 to 15, but I don't think we have to worry about mountain cedar because in today's pollen count, molds are the only allergen present and they're low only at 50. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about when we're finally going to see the sun. We're only about 24 hours away from seeing that sunshine and I'm looking forward to it. Max and Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. Now to the support here at home for citizens in Ukraine trying to protect their homeland and their freedom. Protests held in every major city and a reality star shipping $10 million worth of survival kits to Ukrainians fleeing the country. ABC's Kenneth Moten has a story. Overnight, major landmarks in the U.S. and around the world illuminated in Ukraine's blue and yellow. Protests in the streets across the U.S. Thousands, including Ukrainian Americans, marching. Stand with Ukraine! Fuck it up! Fuck it up! Some demonstrators sharing horrible stories of loved ones trapped in the violence. My mom just like taped all windows because if um, they start shooting and they decide that um, since they don't have the place to hide, uh, they will stay in the bathroom and just hide in the tube. Entrepreneur, philanthropist and former reality star Bethany Frankel using her nonprofit to send aid to families, children in need. We have 100,000 survival kits that we have shipped. We have $10 million in aid that will reach uh, Poland. And we have a warehouse with $16 million of aid in Miami. Frankel says her initiative, Be Strong, partnering with Global Empowerment Mission, has seen an influx of donations since Russia's invasion. They're committing to sending things like hygiene kits, blankets, and generators to NATO countries bordering Ukraine. But they also want to get people out of the region if needed. Helping people with their travel logistics to get them to loved ones or help them get somewhere that's safe, then it's the next layers of this, helping people rebuild. Other aid agencies, including the Red Cross and the UN, calling for the protection of critical infrastructure systems from attacks as they now rush to aid Ukraine citizens. Those aid organizations still having a tough time figuring out the full damage to water and power systems from Russia's attack. The UN urging Ukraine's neighboring countries to keep their borders open to provide safety and protection to those fleeing. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Washington. And the city of San Antonio joined other cities and countries standing with Ukraine. You can see on your screen right now, City Hall lit up last night with the colors of the Ukraine flag. All right, a call to action. We've talked about domestic violence this show. We are talking about child abuse. Three deadly child abuse situations in just the last month. And now child protection advocates are calling on city and state leaders and religious leaders to do more to stop child abuse. Now, this all follows the arrest of a father and stepmother of a four-year-old child who died six months ago. This is the third arrest of the month of caregivers facing charges in a deadly child abuse investigation. A child abuse prevention educator says the community needs to put more pressure on state agencies responsible for protecting our children. To ensure that agencies can do just that, local leaders need to fork over more funding for prevention and for education, but it's also the responsibility of our community as a whole. We really need our faith leaders to speak to this. Our families are starving for moral compassing. If you suspect child abuse that could endanger a child li child's life, call 911 immediately. A new CDC report shows there's an increase in number of young people needing mental health treatment. The spike in the numbers is being blamed on the pandemic. That CDC report finds eating disorders have doubled among adolescent females and disorders have tripled and depression and anxiety and obsessive compulsive dis disorders have also increased. Experts say a look for behavioral changes in your child, like sleep patterns or shifts in attitude. They say it's key to talk with your children, to ask them not only how they are, but if there are any thoughts of self-harm. Adults need to ask and be interested, um, need to be empathic, and to really believe their children when they're being told these things. 
So finding help may take time, but Esquivel advises parents to keep seeking help for their children and not give up until they find it. There are nonprofits in our area that can help, like Clarity Child Guidance Center that specializes in children ages 3 to 17 and can help regardless of a family's financial situation. All right, so we've told you about this before. The City Council approved contracts for community partners to implement the $185 million SA Ready to Work Education and Job Placement Program. Now, we've given you the outline of this program, but the goal is to put more than 28,000 people into either certification or degree programs get almost 16,000 people into high quality in demand jobs. The launch for the program is set for April. So to better explain the program, explain the benefits to families and our community, how to enroll and to find out if you're eligible, the director of the initiative, Michael Ramsey, is joining us on Leading SA tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. All right, it might be cold out there, but it is never a bad day to party here in the Alamo City. We'd love to party in San Antonio. So speaking of parties, Mardi Gras season, it's happening right now. And that's where we find our Jonathan Cotto, who is live at the river, where there's going to be a Mardi Gras parade happening later this evening. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. And I know you asked what was my favorite float, and I have to say it's this float right over here with the Mardi Gras written on it, float number two with this beautiful, cool looking dragon here, some red eyelashes and it's blue eyes. It looks really cool, Maggie. Yeah, yeah he'll blow some smoke out of his mouth too. Mardi Gras smoke. It's Mardi Gras smoke, that's right. And I have to say, I've never participated in Mardi Gras and I haven't been to New Orleans, but I'm participating in it today, San Antonio style, and I'm really excited about that. Maggie, talk to us about what folks can expect if they're planning to head out to downtown for this celebration. Well, we have Mardi Gras weather, so Everybody should just fit right in, and the yes, the festival is from 1 to 8 in the Arneson with lots of great music, and then tomorrow we have Jazz Fest 1 to 8, but the parade is 4 to 6 today. It'll go around twice. Any place on the Riverwalk is a great place to sit. And to name a list of some of the bands that are going to be performing, folks, listen to this. The lineup includes Noah Peterson, the Noah Peterson Quartet, Toro Flores Quartet, the Jean-Pierre and Zydeco Angels, and Billy Ray Shepard as and of course, a main event that everyone's going to be waiting for, uh, and not to mention the food, right? What's what's some typical food of uh, for Mardi Gras? Oh well, gosh, we have beignets up there. We have well, we have funnel cakes. We have great food. We have um, some potatoes. Just different New Orleans fare. We ha I think we have crawfish and etouffee food trucks up there. So everybody, something for everybody. Well, that all sounds delicious. I can use some beignets and some hot chocolate right now. It's going to be a great time, folks. It all starts again from 4 to 6. There's going to be lots of music, lots of food, and we're here for it. Mardi Gras San Antonio style. Back to you in the studio, Max Sarah. All right, Jonathan, Maggie, thank you so much. 4 to 6 this evening, never a bad seat on the river. Also happening today, a pop-up clinic for anyone who wants to get a COVID vaccine, a booster shot or flu shot. Metro Health setting up a clinic at Scobie Middle School. That's on Marbach Road, and it is happening in the gym. It's going on right now, finishing up at 2 this afternoon. All three COVID vaccines are available for those eligible adults and eligible children. All right, so if you're able to fall asleep and stay asleep, Good for you. <laughs> Don't take it for granted. More than half of Americans say they're not getting the uninterrupted sleep they need. This morning, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz takes a look at sleep supplements and whether or not they can help you. Breast cancer survivor Kelly Goldstein had trouble falling asleep for years. Her doctor prescribed Ambien. I was happy with the fact that it knocked me out. Uh, was not thrilled with the side effects that came along with it. Oftentimes, there would be, you know, a bag of popcorn next to my bed, half eaten. The uncommon sleep eating side effects made Kelly uneasy, so she tried the dietary supplement melatonin. It allowed you to sort of feel sleepy and then get ready for bed. Melatonin is a naturally produced hormone that regulates our sleep-wake cycle. It's a good option for people who may not produce enough of the hormone, and it might also help people who are jet lagged or work night shifts. Store shelves are stocked with pills that are supposed to help you sleep, like valerian root used for centuries to treat insomnia, and vitamin D. Some research suggests 
suggest that if your levels are low, adding it may help you nod off faster and sleep longer. And if it's restless leg syndrome keeping you up, your doctor may suggest iron. But be wise when you shop. The Food and Drug Administration doesn't hold supplements to the same standard that they do prescription and over-the-counter drugs. They also don't verify what the labels say are in the supplements. There are groups that do. They test supplements for contaminants like metals or pesticides, so look for their seals. You can also supplement your supplements, like Kelly does with her noise machine. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So it's important to point out some supplements can have very serious side effects and keep in mind they can also adversely interact with other drugs you might be taking, so make sure you talk with your doctor. All right, time now, 941, 37 degrees out. Hey, we had a famous cowboy in town. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna explain why he was in town. Did you want to say something about Elder? Okay, if you go to David Elder's uh, Instagram page, it mm -hmm. kind of shows how Troy Aikman might have snubbed him. They had a really interesting interaction. It's We're going to explain why he's in town. Pretty funny. <laughs> hey, but this weather is not funny. It's no fun at all. It's 37 degrees at 942 this morning. Sarah Spivey says we might see some sunshine in our future. She'll let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. If you are a do-it-yourself person, listen up. San Antonio Home and Garden Show is going on Today, it's touted as a one-stop shop for all you DIYers. The annual event, it's an amazing opportunity to see all the latest products and services in home remodeling, landscaping, pools, entertainment systems, and so much more. Are you ready? Are you going? I am such a home and garden girl. Uh, I don't know if I'll be heading out, but this weekend event is being held at the Alamo Dome. Doors open at 10 this morning and 11 tomorrow morning. Tickets are $10 for adults at the door, eight if you buy them online, and kids 16 and under are free. The show wraps up on Sunday. I remember going to like every home and garden show with my parents growing up. It was always like a lot of fun. Well, I what a lot it. of our viewers don't know is that you have a really like elaborate garden. Not right now. Well, that's because it's 37 degrees out. It's, it's like so sad for me to look outside. Mm. I cannot wait for spring, Sarah. Everything's just dead and waiting for the sun. Well, you'll <laughs> love this week, Sarah. This okay. week is going to be beautiful, and I think a, a reward for us after the cold we've been dealing with since Wednesday, and today will be a damp and cold day. Let's take a look outside with Transguide right now. You'd see 35 Ooh. at 410 there. We had a, a round of drizzle move through San Antonio a little while ago, a wave of drizzle move through, and, and that's going to be the case today. That's uh, 35 at Olympia. You can see some light ponding there on the roads and here's a look at the live radar right now you know Although we're not seeing much uh, around San Antonio at the moment, we are going to have another wave here of drizzle throughout the day uh, in San Antonio. But the heavier, lighter rain is off to the east right now, working its way through Gonzales, Cuero, Hallettsville, Luling. These areas could see up to a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rainfall today east of San Antonio. Whereas here in San Antonio and in Bear County, we're really only looking at potentially a few hundredths of an inch of rainfall uh, at Time. So not a drought buster by any means. And in fact, it's just going to kind of be a nuisance today and want to keep you inside and warm because temperatures are not going to budge all that much from where they're at right now. Let's take a look outside at, uh, with live cam. It's 36 degrees at the airport and the airport was just measuring some light rain. Winds from the northeast at about 10 miles per hour and that wind today it's going to make it feel pretty cold outside. A wind chill is in the forecast as well. Where there's not drizzle, there is lowered visibility from some mist and some fog. Uh, visibility down to three miles at Bernie Sage Airfield, down to three in San Antonio, down to two and a half in New Braunfels, down to four mile visibility in Kerrville. And temperatures on the cold side. It's 33 in Kerrville, 37 in Hondo, 39 in Castroville, 38 in New Braunfels, 40 at Stenson, and 39 in Pleasanton. A wider view here, by the way, the sensor at Del Rio is out this morning, but Del Rio will get a little bit more sunshine later on this afternoon. 40 in Catula outside right now. It's uh, 37 in Hondo. And as I just mentioned, there is a wind from the north east at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that makes it feel like it's 29 degrees in San Antonio, even though the thermometer is in the mid 30s. So uh, if you're not getting the drizzle or the light rain, you're going to get the cold either way. It's going to feel cold all day long. And as far as rainfall chances go, 40% scattered throughout the day. Again, we're looking at waves of drizzle and very light rain showers. So it's not going to rain all day long, but there is 
it's going to be a chance for rain all day long and by tonight we'll see those rain chances taper off. So today's forecast calls for temperatures pretty much holding steady only topping off near 40 degrees this afternoon. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 20 miles per hour and then tonight we'll be in the upper 30s and that's actually where we're going to start off tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll start off a lot like the last few days where it'll be gray and cold temperatures will be in the 30s. But here's the good news right around lunch. That's when we're going to see skies clear from north to south and it's going to be a beautiful sunny afternoon tomorrow. Sunday living up to its name 60 degrees for the high tomorrow. A nice respite from the cold we've been dealing with over the last few days and that nice weather is going to continue into next week as we start March. Temperatures will be near 70 degrees uh, from Tuesday into the weekend. The one thing that I wish we could see more of on here is chance for rain to help us out with the drought and even today's rainfall it's not going to do much again only a few hundredths to a tenth of an inch of rain that's not going to do anything to that drought unfortunately for us but at least the weather is going to be nice as we turn the corner on february thank you sarah all right 950 37 degrees now max we're in playoff season we are we're talking about high school hoops highlights from some of the top games last night when we come back Good morning, welcome back. And hey, Cowboys fans, listen up because a lot of Cowboys fans locally doing a double take three time Super Bowl champ and, of course, former Cowboys quarterback Troy Aikman was in the Alamo City. He was in town promoting his new Beer 8 at various establishments. And Thursday night was one of his stops at the Beer Depot. He was inundated with Cowboys fans. Aikman didn't really want to talk about his impending jump or potential jump from Fox to ESPN's Monday Night Football. He did tell us what makes eight so great. Well, we're real proud of it. You know, we set out over two years ago to make it and uh, wanted a low calorie, low carb beer and, uh, and wanted to do it a little bit differently, something that was different from what was already on the market. I feel like we've done that. There's no adjuncts or fillers in our beer, uh, which means there's no added corn, rice, syrup, or, or sugars. And so uh, I like to refer to it as a better for you beer. And uh, it's, been, it's been real well received, so I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's like a healthier beer. Sure. All right, so back to Aikman's possible move to ESPN. Odds are good that he's excited about his new contract offer. And Sarah, why is that? Because it's $90 million for five years. It yeah, is I'm just response. like, why didn't we get into ESPN sports? <laughs> well, we're, we're not three-time Super Bowl champs. So we will oh see when the, uh, when the numbers and when the jump is official. It hurts me. But back here at home, we have high school hoops to talk about. Boys basketball, Class 5A area round. Bernie Champion taking on Jefferson. Mustangs trying to rally in the fourth quarter. Joseph and Cohen kicks it out to Aaron for three. Bang! That makes it a 12-point game. The Chargers come alive, swinging around the perimeter. Jesse from the corner, triple drop, and that is a drop in the bucket. Four Chargers finishing in double digits. Bernie Champion pulling away and pulling out with the W, 68-47. to Next game, another Class 5A matchup. Brackenridge taking on Veterans Memorial Eagles. Strike first in the first quarter. Here we go. Isaiah driving baseline, getting the floater to fall off the glass in early 2-0 lead, but Veterans Memorial and Devin McLeod Answers kicking the ball back out to J.J. Thompson. Top of the arc, swish, drains it three and a one-point lead. Patriots taking control with 11-0 run. Clay making his way to the bucket, looking like Clay Thompson. Banking it in, Veterans Memorial leads 18-6 after one, and they go on to win huge 72-44. Still can't get over that $90 million contract. Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's a lot. All right. <laughs> Just about 9.56, 37 degrees out. All right, so during Black History Month this year, there has been a for health and there's been a push for health and wellness. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll break down a top health concern for African American women. In today's pollen count, the only allergen present is mold and it's low, so that's a good looking pollen count, but a not so great looking forecast today. Chilly and damp. Most of the rain right now is falling east of San Antonio, but we're going to see waves of drizzle and light rain throughout the day today. 37 degrees. Temperatures have not really budged all that much, and they're not going to do so today because we'll really only top off near 40 degrees with drizzle and light rain possible throughout the day. Winds from the northeast at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. A chilly chilly forecast for us today but guess what the sun will come out tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow. yeah exactly right <laughs> by noon we'll be seeing some sunshine and 60 degrees and then it's off to the races with beautiful weather in the week ahead 
chilly mornings, but comfortable afternoons near four, uh, 70 degrees. All right. I'm going to let you guys do all the singing. Well, you, you sounded great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so that is it here on GMSA Saturday morning. But don't worry, we got Texas Seeds coming up in 12 seconds. And tomorrow morning, we start bright and early, 6 a.m. We have Leading SA. Great stories to tell you about. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around Central Texas looking for delicious restaurants you won't want to miss. The first stop on today's foodie adventure is in Seguin, Texas. Now we're here in Seguin, Texas to go inside of what used to be a power plant, but now it's a fully functioning kitchen with a great bar and a killer scene. Let's go inside the power plant. Joining me now is Nicole Baptiste, and she's the owner out here at the power plant. Thank you so much for having us out here. This was a functioning power plant at one time, right? It was. It is the original power plant that uh, serviced the city of Seguin. This plant is really cool because it was a power plant. It's a functioning power plant at one time. Now it's a restaurant. So when you come here, you get to visit, check out all the area around it, and you also get to go inside and get a little piece of history. These are some of the largest, juiciest, cheesiest burgers yes. I've ever seen here in Texas. So right here we have our ACDC burger. It's so a bacon cheeseburger, and you've got a double patty going on there. Look at that. Gooey cheese, you got all the fixings in there, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise on there, big old slices of crispy bacon. Here we go. The power plant's not playing around when it comes to all the different food on the menu, including their burgers. These things, you can get them regular or you can get them massive. I recommend the massive ones, right? That's your double half pound bison burger. Wow, this is gorgeous. Y'all know how to make a good display or a good presentation. Here we go, I'll take another bite. This is the bison burger. Mm. Love it. Uh, these things are insane. The bison burger, is my favorite burger out here. That's just a good burger. Mm. Cowboy ribeye. This is a bone-in ribeye out here. You got shrimp on the side. They're all butterflied and deep fried. Mixed veggies on there as well. We were actually voted best steak in Seguin this year. What? Congratulations. A nice cook on there as well. Looking at about a medium finish on there. I love the little bit of, of char that you got on the outside there. It has a nice crispy exterior, but it's cooked perfectly so the fat's rendered, and then you have that interior in there. It's nice and warm. It is really, that's just a great steak. I gotta try one of these little shrimp. That's delicious too. The shrimp is cooked nicely, juicy, tender, and you guys know what you're doing down here. Wow. This is the onion ring, breaded deep fried here in house. Mm. They're already calling. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. This is our frog dip. And so we have beef inside of the queso with uh, pico and guacamole. Wow. That's a, an appetizer. That's what you want to get when you come out here. You get that put this on chips. This is You're very gonna have popular. Fun. Very oh, popular. I bet. Mm -hmm. Looking at this monster right here. This is your chicken fried steak. Southwest style. So this is actually our lineman chicken fried steak. So it's one of our bigger portions of a chicken fried steak. The breading out here at the power plant is so special and they're breading and deep frying a lot of different things out here. Mushrooms, onion rings, a couple other items, but the one you gotta get, the chicken fried steak. What we call Southwest style. So it has pico and queso on top of it. Oh yeah. This is like, if you're like next level hungry, you're going for it. You get it Southwest style, you get the queso and you get the pico de gallo is just smothered in it. And it just makes it that much better. All right, that's the bite right there. Woo. The queso Get out of here. It. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's delicious. More people need to make it that way. 
That is absolutely incredible. See, that's like two normal orders, right? It is, yes. And the normal order is pretty big for the average person. But they call it the lineman, because I guess it takes a lineman to finish it. But this thing's huge, y'all. This is our Cajun pasta. So it's a little spicy. And it's, it's one of our top sellers as well. So you've got some grilled chicken and some grilled shrimp on the side. I just want to try this pasta real quick. Let's get a little bit of that action. Mm. That I love that. The Cajun spice to it. Nice gnawing sauce on there. The one dish we were told to try by the kitchen is the Cajun pasta. It comes with shrimp on the side. You got some chicken breast on top as well that you can add on. But it's that creamy sauce, that New Orleans sauce. It is just delicious. It's just got a really good creamy yeah. New Orleans flavor on there. Yeah. A little bit spice, but really it's just flavor forward. Yeah. This pasta is cooked perfectly. A little bit of toast on the side. This is a rocking dish. You have the side items, mac and cheese. You got like a loaded, loaded mashed potatoes out here. You got it all, including a cocktail uh, scene out here, a cocktail program that you guys are just knocking out. This is called our Power Plantarita. It's a top shelf margarita. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's dangerous. That tastes like goodness after a long day. This is like a sweet tea cocktail, it's right? Like power plant Texas tea. Oh, see, that's <laughs> dangerous. Put a little bit of lemon on there too. They have a couple signature cocktails on the menu out here, but the one that I really like is their sweet tea cocktail. This thing is just delicious and it goes down real smooth. You guys, this is where it's at. You come out to Seguin, you have to stop here at the power plant. A lot of cool history. You can walk around, enjoy yourself. The river is just right there. There's all kinds of fun places to dine at as well. And it's just delicious food. Over the top drinks. This is where it's at. Give me some foot. <laughs> there you go. This is awesome. I'm gonna keep drinking and eating. I got a lot of food to eat here. Enjoy. Now we're here on the northeast side of San Antonio, right here on Walsham Road, to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up some delicious soul food. Let's go inside Mama Lou's Soul Food and Kitchen. Joining us now is Tasha Willis. In front of us, we have all this delicious food. Everything looks absolutely fantastic out here, but I gotta know, who's Mama Lou? Mama Lou is my great-grandmother. Oh, that's her right there. Right here. And then her daughter is Lou Esther, which is my grandmother. Why name a restaurant after her? A lot of people forget where they came from, and we just did it as a tribute to honor our grandmothers. What do we have in front of us? This all looks absolutely delicious. We got some oxtails uh, over rice, mother wow. with brown gravy. Uh, we have our, our pork chops, fried pork chops along with some fried chicken, as well as some fried catfish. Yes. A lot of people haven't tried oxtail before. Oxtail is actually the tail of the cow. Uh, I used to call it brisket, but people told me stop calling it brisket, but it, it is the look cow. How, the look tail how tender that is. I mean, it just falls it's apart. Good. We get some of the rice, a little bit of the gravy on there. So is this all your great grandmother's recipes? Or is this just family recipes in general? This is not all of my grandmother's recipes. I actually, we. This is just a tribute to the grandmothers of some good food that they will be proud of that wow. we're serving to our community. That's what this is. Incredible. You got to get it with the gravy. You got to get it with the rice. And it just falls apart. It tastes just like brisket. So if you never had it before, you're a little apprehensive about trying it. Imagine brisket, but just stewed up with all the right seasonings, all the right rice and, and gravy on top. I mean, it is fantastic. Extremely tender. I mean, it's just falling right off the bone right there. This is where it's at. Delicious. The rice has a really nice uh, puffy texture to it. And then you have the gravy on there. The sauce is killer. People want to know, you got, do you have fried chicken on the menu? You guys got fried chicken on yes. the menu. Yes. And that's what we have right here. Is this a standard order, like a three piece? Yes, this is a three piece. Our one meat plate comes with three pieces of chicken. Wow. Yes. That looks good. Yes. <laughs> All right, I got to take a bite out of this. Got to see what's going on. Wow. <laughs> it's flavorful. Yeah. It's pretty flavorful. This is loaded. Mm. I love how simple you guys made everything. It's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It just, it has the essence of salt, pepper, a really good dredge, a nice breading, a good coating on there, yes. fried nice, yes. flavored down to the bone. 
Yes. But you're doing it right. Yes. Wow. Now we jump over. You have all these proteins, all these entrees, but they're only as good as the sides that come with them. So we have right. over here some different items. Talk to me about what's going on right here. Candied yams. Candied yams. They're real cut candied yams. What you got here? Black eyed peas, mm -hmm. greens, collard greens, and mac and cheese, along with some fried okra. Of course, you gotta have the fried okra going on. Candied yams, what goes into your oh recipe here? goodness. You know the right stuff. Butter. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Brown sugar, cinnamon, the real stuff. The real stuff. <laughs> you can smell it. It's mm. Thanksgiving again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. That's just a meal in itself. I know. You just order that, you're good to go. <laughs> this is the one. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. <laughs> Everybody loves mac and cheese. Everybody loves mac and cheese. This is where it's at, right here. Mama Luce has a lot of different side items on the menu, including collard greens, fried okra, mac and cheese, black eyed peas. But the one you gotta try is the candied yams. These things are rocking. I'm just done. taking a tour of the South right now. You, it really that's is. That's right. That's really what this is. Talk oh, to me about yeah. the different sweets you got going on. Of course, we got that banana pudding. Oh. We got that sweet potato pie. Now, can people, this looks like you got a drive through going on. Can people also come up curbside? Can they pick up food as well? Yes, we got curbside, drive through also call-in orders. So we give out the Mama Lou's card so they can feel free to call in. That way we can have their um, orders ready when they get here. You guys can come out here. It's right on the northeast side of San Antonio. I mean, this is where it's at. You it can is. come get your food, come get your soul food out here. This is where, I mean, get the oxtail. Oh my gosh, you're gonna fall in love with them, especially if you've never had them. Oh. They have the desserts, they got the mac and cheese, they got the fried chicken, the catfish, fried pork chops. Mm -hmm. This is where it's at. And of course, banana pudding. You're making me want to eat something. I'm all, you're making me want to eat something <laughs> right now. And next, we go inside a spot voted the best burgers in Texas. This is it, that's it? This is why you won. That's exactly why. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. <laughs>